to the captain's quarter. quarter, quarter. All right, here we are, episode eight of the Captain's Quarters. Here we are with the boys again. It is hey. Sunday, June fourteenth. I'm very hungover. I'm supposed to be a Bonnaroo right now with Ryan, but I'm not. And um, yeah, it's how you guys doing? That's a sad story. It's a very sad yeah, story. It sucks. I mean, at least you saved like four hundred dollars. Plus out of food, drinks. Oh no, I was narcotics. I was totally expecting on spending like over a thousand dollars this weekend, so Jesus Christ. I mean that's nice that I'm not gonna do that, but <laughs> you know. I'm supposed to see my boys this that's weekend, fair. but I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. You think it'll they, you think they'll have it next year? Well they're supposed to have it in September, but uh Live Nation offered everybody a refund. And I went ahead and took it because I don't see it happening in September. So, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. If you took the, if you didn't take the refund, could you get another refund if it didn't happen in September? Who knows? I don't know. Live Nation's kind of a asshole. They so. are kind of a bag of dicks. They owned yeah. by that's like fair. Ticketmaster or something. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, who knows what they're gonna do? But yeah, I didn't even really expect them to offer a refund. I figured they were gonna offer like. You know, at the very most, next year for free or something. But, uh... No, what really sucks, though, is the people that bought, like, airline tickets and, like, all that me. shit. That I are, did that. And you don't get a refund for that, typically. They'll just give you a credit for a flight within 365 days. Yeah, so I got that. I have, like... And I did that with all my flights. I was supposed to run a, a half marathon in Philadelphia in November, and I went ahead and canceled that, too. And, uh... Yeah, 2020, man, definitely like fucked up all of my plans. So super that's, happy, super cool. Sad. I'm just going very insane. Cool yeah, Fuck very him. cool, Kanye. Uh, that was that. That was a uh, sip it on syrup, Hunter. Uh, we were also joined uh, by your boy TF Ocelot, David. <laughs> Did you have any huge plans that were ruined by the coronavirus this week? Uh, no, no, I did not. Actually, I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to go to the beach on my birthday, um, which is the end of this month. But uh, it seems I'll be able to do that because Rhode Island, or state in which I live, if you want to blur that out, I don't care, uh Um, is uh, they opened their beaches. They opened the beaches this year, um, which is good for me. Probably not for everyone that gets COVID, but for me, it's great. Because I get to go to the beach. Um, And ideally, if things go right, I'll be underwater on my birthday. Should be good. Is Rhode Island seeing any kind of a bump back? As far as like like in the like cases. spiking of the of the cases? Yeah. Um not that I know of actually, not yet. I, I know that there's been oscillating, but like I don't I don't actually know if it's actually had a problem. Um, yeah. But I mean we have done like a really light open. Like I think you could still only have like parties of ten or parties of fifteen at restaurants right now. Um, so and you have to stay six feet apart and all that BS. So it's like, it's definitely the word. I mean, they open the stuff, but we're not like shut down anymore. Like I, I can travel to Connecticut yeah. now and not have any issues. Whereas before, if I went to Connecticut, they had the national guard sitting on the border and it, you would oh, have shit. to do a 14 day quarantine, like mandatory, like they take your name and be like, okay, you went here and literally like huh. you make you stay in your house for 14 days. So that was, that's interesting. Um, couldn't visit oh, my parents crazy. for that long because, like, basically, if you left the state and came back, you had to be in your house for fourteen days. But yeah, so we're kind of we're, we're actually a lot more open now than we were before, which is great. And the ability to park at the beach is great as well because that was they actually didn't shut down the beaches because they legally couldn't, um, but they just closed all the parking, so you couldn't park on the streets, you couldn't park in blah blah blah, and so like you had to like if you lived near it, you could walk to it, and that was basically if you had a friend that lived near the beach, you could do it. Um, I'm not sure you could Uber. Yeah, like Uber to the beach and then Uber back or something. So, like, technically, you could still go to the beach, but uh, that'd be an asshole move. Uber right? back to the <laughs> just beach. Get sand, just get sand just get all sand. over the Uber. <laughs> You're fucking sweaty you smell, asshole. Like, low tide. <laughs> God damn. Oh, man. Fucking monsters. I mean, and we're also joined. If you live near a beach area, right. I'm sure they have to deal with that all the time. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I guess probably. that's fair. That's true. Like only you're drunk and like <laughs> smell like the sea. I used to I used to drive for Uber, and I, there were a couple instances where 
like some frat guy on the road called me and he was shirtless walking home and I guess he was too drunk to make it home so he called me and I just said no I said no you put your shirt back on <laughs> and uh I, I couldn't have, I would never pick up anybody from the fucking beach that sounds terrible Ugh. Get a, no, that's when you just like drive a truck for Uber and you make them get in the fucking bed so you can just spray it down later. In bed. <laughs> yeah, get in the bed, boy. Is that legal in Dunkirk? Can you guys still ride in the back of trucks? Like, yeah, I hope so. Freedom and free. Uh, Hell but, yeah. Like, up here, Obama's it is not, not taking away my goddamn <laughs> fucking truck driver limo. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's We're also joined by uh, Crash Carl and Ryan over here. Wearing the beanie. He's a beanie boy. Uh, cream Carl, actually. Cream uh, excuse Carl. me, Cream wow. Carl. Yeah. Cream Pie Carl. Like, cr- yeah. <laughs> Either one I like all the iterations the name, of Carl. That's the, that's that's the name of his autobiography. Creamed yeah. by Carl. Yeah, that's what, what we whatever, had. Whatever you right. gotta do to make that work. Hell yeah. Very nice. But yeah, so I know David's been a scuba Steve lately. He's he's a scuba boy now. Oh, yep. Certified. Congratulations on getting your cert, uh, certification. Thank you. Thank wow. you. It yeah. only took like maybe a long <laughs> two months, but I was supposed to only take two weeks, but you know. <laughs> corona. It, yeah, the corona coronavirus. Just corona it is how it is. Yeah. Just it's corona funny. things. Yeah, basically every step was delayed except for going in the ocean. That was the only one that wasn't delayed because they're like, yeah, we can't put you in a classroom because of COVID. Can't put you in a pool because of COVID. And it's like, well, the ocean, they can't do anything about it. It's like, there's, there's no COVID. In about the it. <laughs> it's no COVID. No. You brought your own air. It's fine. <laughs> Nobody else is getting sick. So, yeah. but it was a, it's a fun journey. Fun journey. I, I recommend awesome. it to anyone that can afford it. So. But, yeah, that's that's the big part yeah. of like everything that I ever want to do in my life is just can I afford it? Right. And I mean, typically that's a no. <laughs> <laughs> it's only like five hundred dollars up front for like getting the certification, but then you have to rent gear for like eighty dollars a day if you don't own it. And so it's like for that's a lot of people terrible, it's not like though. worth it. I mean that's true. I mean if you if it's like as a vacation, like a day trip kind of thing. A lot of people right. spend that in a day, that's true. I think the big the five hundred dollars up front is probably the big one for a lot of people, but you know it's not that bad. It's not not bad at all. Yeah. Um, I don't think of Rhode Island as the scuba destination, <laughs> though. To be fair, honestly, like I was surprised going in the waters. Like it was just like, wow, this is actually like there's a ton of sea life. Like this is really weird. Like I would not have guessed this. Like plants everywhere, eelgrass, like seaweed, like all sorts of fish, like. We saw. I've I've seen a different type of fish every time I've gone scuba diving, and like it's been like just, seen any like crabs or anything like that. Uh, saw a um spider crab, spider crab. Ooh. Ooh. Those are fucking no, terrifying. They're, they're pretty awesome. <laughs> he uh, he wasn't happy nightmare about fuel. me finding him though. Was <laughs> they're nightmare fuel, dude? They're the slowest crabs in the ocean, man. You can't. <laughs> they remind me of like you know the things from like War of the Worlds. Oh, like the big spindle walker things. Yeah, yeah the big like big ass leg spindle thing, like whoa. <laughs> like they like the ocean's version of those. I guess like from afar you'd probably be like, oh, that's creepy. But um, yeah, they're, they're they're the nicest crabs when you pick them up because they literally like move so slow. They're just like, no, please stop, don't do it. <laughs> By nicest, you mean like they can't do anything. They about literally it, can't do I mean. anything. They can't. Yeah, they're too slow to consent. So you exactly. can do whatever. Cool, right. David. And then the uh, the blue crabs are the ones that like they'll they'll just be sitting there just like flailing wildly while you're trying to make it just like please yeah. no I have a family no <laughs> so, <laughs> but how much yeah, of scubaing is like just fucking with the creatures? Uh, I feel like ninety percent of it. Like 90, yeah, I feel like, like it 10% is. Ten percent of it is like low vis and you can't see shit, and then the other ten of it is like oh there's a thing over there I'm gonna go fuck with it. I'm gonna go like, fuck with that thing. <laughs> it's just like look at that thing over there I'm gonna touch it. Have, have I'm a human and I can do whatever yet? I want. Have I what now? Have you eaten anything yet that you found on there? Uh, no. I have had the opportunity to grab things. Um, we rented a bunch of conch, um, and apparently they taste like escargot, which I wasn't that interested in. But they're like literally giant snails. Uh, like, like a conch shell, uh, you look at it and you're like, oh, gross. what could be in that? And you, for some reason, my brain always was, always went to like a hermit crab, but it literally is yeah. just a, a big fucking snail. Like you pick it up and it just like retracts into itself and it looks like a snail, and you're like, oh, that's literally a snail. <laughs> so like, it, it's weird to me to see them in the in their wild because like I they usually wash up on shore and I've like never seen the actual animal inside them. And so like actually seeing them like moving on the ocean floor, you're like, this isn't correct. I don't like this. <laughs> like, it's just supposed to be stationary. You can't do that. 
Um, but yeah, I'm no. supposed to put my ear to the shell and hear the ocean. There's not supposed to be <laughs> living things in this. Wait a minute, that's illegal. Has there been any danger yet? Anything? Uh-oh. Anything Uh-oh. dangerous going oh, on? He's dead. Well, he, he died. Yeah, I guess he didn't like the question. Yeah. <laughs> Have you been attacked by a shark is. yet? Have I done what? Have you been attacked by like a shark or a swordfish yet? Uh, no. Nope. Closest I got to that was I scared a skate, and the skate went away. <laughs> That's about as a much skate? as I, a skate. It's like a stingray. Um, they're uh. pretty native to up here. Um, like if you ever see those black pouches on the beach, they're like little like, like they have like two prongs on the edges of them, and they have like the black. It's just like a big black pouch. They're pretty common down North Carolina too. Um, they're called like uh, sand puppies or something like that. I don't know, but the skates are like the little mini rays, and they don't have actual stingers. They have like an electrode thing that they use for sensing stuff. But they're cool. Uh-huh. I thought it was like I was sitting there for a second. I was like, "Is it? Oh shit! Is that a, like an Atlantic stingray?" And I'm like, "No, that's just a skate." And I'm like, "Oh, all right." The scuba instructor was not bothered by it at all. But I was at first, I was like, "Oh shit! Are we all going to get stung? Or am I dead?" <laughs> like, Steve Irwin going <laughs> so, out Steve Irwin style. Right. Yeah. But see, uh, scuba diving intrigues me, but I've also got a phobia of insects. And the ocean is essentially just full of, like, imagine insects as, like, giant dinosaur versions of themselves, but they're underwater and you're in their domain. And so that's just, like, an ethereal nightmare for me, is just being down there helpless while, like, a horseshoe <laughs> crab just, like, sucks my face off. They probably I knew you'd will. be, like, afraid of horseshoe crabs. Those are hilarious. Dude, horse- I saw a horseshoe crab when I was young, and that traumatized me for years. <laughs> they're aliens. You know they have ten eyes? <laughs> legitimately dinosaur aliens dude. yeah they, they've been on the earth longer than we have which is kind of insane uh, they know things that we don't they know the <laughs> forbidden just, knowledge they saw the elders fun fact about horseshoe <laughs> crabs is the way that they mate i found this out because i was watching the males they like they grab onto the back of the female but they don't mate with the female like while they're on the female they just ride the female until she gets to a spot where she lays her eggs, and then they fertilize the eggs later. So they don't. They just they just hook on and they just ride. So they, they just like take an Uber <laughs> and then just like spray their seed all over. Like oh god, they would go back to your place, baby. All right. <laughs> yeah, like, that's a good way to do that. To I, didn't, I never thought of that. <laughs> and they're like the, the the mating rituals is that the other males like try to play king of the hill. They knock the other males off of the females. Like they're like no, nah, I'm getting this ride. This is mine. <laughs> It's like the dominant male rides the the female to victory. The idea of that as humans and some chicks just walking home from the club, like 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 carrying some like me, and then Ryan just comes up and punches the fuck out of me off this chick. And he's like, "This is my bitch now." It's just hard. Like they have to carry you my back. eggs. <laughs> oh my god, these are my eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! Uh, not actually, not surprisingly enough, the males are all tiny. They're like this, like this big, and the females are all like just gigantic trucks. And they're just like the little ones are just like these little like males hanging on for dear life. Like I hope I get to fertilize some eggs today. <laughs> it's like... I feel like in the animal kingdom, males are like the smaller ones, and then humans, like males, are typically the bigger ones. I think it's like that for most mammals, uh, or whatever. Yeah. Like the males are a little bigger, but I don't know for but, sure. Yeah, I can't. I'm not a scientist. I don't know. <laughs> I <That's> speculate. <laughs> but, I'm still telling you, dude, it'd be worth the cost. You could be the only Twitch streamer that fucking streams under the ocean, dude. I've been thinking about, because um, I record my dives with a GoPro, um, so I've been thinking about, like, on the beginning of my streams, doing, like, a dive review and be like, if I saw something cool, we'll watch the dive and, and like, having it go through and stuff like That'd that. That'd be really cool. Give people cool. the experience. Until I get like a tethered, like million dollar fucking <laughs> rig to go out on the water with me. Just, have a can, boat just with get a, a Google Fiber connection to your suit, easy, dude. A what? And just get like a Google Fiber line strung straight to your diving suit. suit. <laughs> <laughs> easy. Underwater streamer <laughs> backpack, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it's possible, but you're probably going to be spending over like $10,000. Oh, yeah. Well, for, I mean, like, like you're, you're basically doing what. Um, like they do with the subs, the little subs that they bring down underwater. It's like it's basically just yeah. you're the sub now. <laughs> so you can see, there's a ten thousand dollar submarine you can buy. Mm, that's true. It is true. So like there's there it's possible. <laughs> Anyone that has a lot of money that wants to see me freak the fuck out under the ocean, like hit your boy up. There you I'll go. do it. Invest He'll in, in Milne's sphere. <laughs> we'll and then have like Rogan, jump scares we'll... go off underneath the submarine. Yeah, easy. Do Fear Factor underwater with Milne. <laughs> oh no! Make him eat cockroaches underwater. I, I would. I, I'd legitimately kill myself before I ate a cockroach. 
Like, I would legitimately rather die than have a cockroach anywhere on my body. That's fair enough. I wouldn't do it. What? I can't do it. You can't do it? <laughs> That'd be like t- trying to get Ryan to eat a spider. Like, Ryan wouldn't do it. How much money? Uh, I feel like, yeah, as I say, I feel like Ryan would, would has a point where you could just be like, put this spider in your mouth and you'd be like, all right. <laughs> for, for d- d- as long as it pays for, like, the years of therapy that I've got to go through, yeah, perfect. <laughs> would you rather eat a cockroach or drink the 30 ounces of cum? Mm-hmm. I'd probably drink the cum over the cockroach if I'm being completely Oof. honest. That's a bad. That's a mistake. <laughs> Is it dead that's or alive? <laughs> the cum. The, the cockroach. cockroach. <laughs> uh, both are dead. <laughs> yeah, if it's dead, I'll eat it. If it's alive, I'd have a harder time. You know that that's a question that we didn't go over. How fresh was that cum? No. Oh, no. That- like, do they milk it backstage, or is this like a month old? No, nah. like, I'd eat that because it was in like a milk jug in a cooler. Yeah, they probably oh. like kept it like yeah in storage. Like, does it have like a film over it? Because if it's like, I don't. Oh, oh. <laughs> I bet you like the idea for that was just like a guy sitting there like, man, I've impregnated all my cows, and now I got all this bull semen. What do I do with it? And they're like, I know, we'll make people eat it. We'll call Joe <laughs> we'll Rogan. Eat it on air. <laughs> he's been making like local college kids do it for years, but now he's actually got it on TV. <laughs> Hey, Billy Joe, get over here and drink this horse cum. He's like, well, I don't know, sir. <laughs> Puts $100 down on the table. Oh, well, I reckon. Oh, man. I, I have reckon. to say, like, as a child, I had a lot more faith in humanity before I saw both Fear Factor and like the Girls Gone Wild commercials. I was like, wow, people really are yeah. just dumb, huh? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's... It was, that was surprising for me as a kid. The girls gone wild. Yeah, yeah. It's weird when you're like a person of authority with like movie production video cameras, and you can pay sixteen year old girls to get drunk and then show their tits. It's kind of weird how that happens. It's just Good like, times. Oh, oh. Good times. <laughs> oh well. I'm pretty sure the dude that did the girls gone wild is straight up in prison right I'm now. I'm sure too. he is. Like, there's no way that man looked like a creep. <laughs> like, that just, like, like that, the biggest scumbag right. ever. Those were always great commercials at like five in the morning on Comedy Central, though. Oh yeah, it's always. True. You're watching the man. Well, show yeah, because I <laughs> specifically remember the one with uh, well, what's his name? The booty, 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 rocking everywhere. They had the fucking rapper there. Oh, he was in some of them. Yeah, I don't know who's name. Bubba, who's Bubba Sparks. Wow. Is that his name? Could not tell you. Sure. Whatever. Didn't follow that man since the the girls gone wild days. That's fair. That's fair. But yeah, we're also joined by. I, we, we're doing really good on these intros. We're good, we're here with Crash Carl or Ryan as well. I, I don't know if I already did this. No, it's Cream Pie Carl. Already we already talked about Cream Pie Carl. Cream. I, I'm also, a little drunk. You're, you're speaking of Fat <laughs> Joe as the the rapper. Fat he's, Joe. He's yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Jesus Christ. Rap fat. But anyways, Ryan. Uh, Ryan, how was your week? How was my week? Um, my last two weeks. You mean? Hmm. Oh yeah, we took a we had to take a week off. Um, it is what it is. We're here now. Yeah, and we're going to be doing E three talk. Or kind of E three talk. Some is some, it really E three? If E three is it not actually happening? <laughs> it's well, we'll get to that later. I actually had a point to bring up about that, but we'll do once we get past our weeks, we'll talk about it. Fair. Uh, my weeks were good. I did a few things. Remember, I said that I had finished the Clone Wars. Yeah, started watching yes. Rebels. Oh. That's another animated show that takes place before uh-huh. New Hope. And uh, it's got a bad rap. People don't like it because it's not the Clone Wars. So I kind of went in with like super low expectations. And I actually liked it. Like the first season was slow, but oh, the good. second one is definitely picked up. And I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. But still got two more seasons of that to watch. Um, I watched the newest season of Queer Eye. That show is awesome. Um, highly recommend that if you need some male fashion tips, some male fashion advice, or you just want to feel good about yourself. You just want to feel good. Yeah, yeah. That show is really <laughs> uplifting. It's very wholesome. It's a very wholesome show. It'll uh, make you cry sometimes. It, it will, yeah. And I, I watched the, they did Japan a couple months ago, and I went and rewatched that again. And that is something. That, that is something because Japan is so fucking backwards when it comes to like like modern day values and stuff. Like they still are not a fan of gay people, and like as far as like emotions and stuff go, they pretty much tell you to hide those. There's no like therapy or anything going on there. 
So it was crazy seeing the Fab Five get there and them being like so fucking culture shocked because, you know, they're very all about expressing yourself and being the best version of yourself. So they had to deal with some people that were like truly depressed, but were told not to feel depressed. So that made for some interesting content. Um, some really sad stories that were made happy. So that was cool, but it's really eye opening to, to look at that. It's like a Republican's wet dream is Japan. Yeah, I guess. And even like, like women's rights are still not much of a thing there either. It's like it's, no, it's, yeah, it's not, no. it's not yeah. great. Japan is still very backwards. Which is weird because when you think of Japan, you think of happy anime, and you don't think about that. <laughs> um, That's what they want you to think. Yeah, they're still <laughs> yeah. yeah, like the way and the way like the workforce is treated there and everything. Like you're expected to work. Yeah, Japan's got like a fucking bomb ass PR team, dude. Absolutely. Like it's the happy yeah, anime the, the, and the hentai. Yeah. Yeah, and there's maid cafes. Yeah. <laughs> the, oh my god. Oh my god, it's One Piece. Whoa. Naruto. Well, they also get like rest during the middle of the day, don't they? Like they they have like almost like the siesta kind of thing where they basically make their employees rest right in the middle of the day. They have to because if they didn't they would die. That, that's fair. There's a phenomenon during meetings like if you're putting on a like a production, like a big meeting in a convention hall, there's an actual system there where the more people that are asleep in the audience, the better your production is. And it's because their time the, – the, the theory is because people work like 16-hour work days. Your, your uh, information is so valuable that people's free time, they'll go there to watch you, but they fall asleep because they're so exhausted. Wow. That's, that's certainly something. That sounds yeah, horrible. Yeah, super good. Yep. But that's why like you find like Japanese people like pass out on the side of the street in the morning because as soon as they got off work yeah. they're like I have to get blackout drunk right now <laughs> or yeah. else I'm just gonna kill myself and so wow. they do and yeah. they they stay up till like six in the morning and they're supposed to be at work at 7 30. yeah and, it's super good yeah. that's also why their suicide rates like 30 percent or something fucking egregious yeah. yeah well they have suicide forests too right like that yeah, yeah, the suicide forest is really fucked up. Thank you, Mr. Paul, for uh, for capitalizing off suicide. You're very cool, very good. So yeah, very you cool. can you can see why the Fab Five was pretty fucking. They were like, "What the hell?" When they got there, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. Like, and they're so oppressed, man. The, the, one of the saddest episode was this guy who was like forced to marry this woman, and they didn't love each other. Or they were living in the same home. They slept in the same bed, but they would they wouldn't kiss each other. They wouldn't look at each other. Um, but you know, like also too in Japan, you got small apartments, so they're crammed in this small area. And the woman worked at like a, a maid cafe. She was actually a maid, and the guy he he did like CS and stuff. And they just wouldn't acknowledge each other ever. And so the Fab Five got there, like, you guys are you in love? What is what is happening here? Like, <laughs> this is not normal. And they they actually fixed their marriage, which was really nice. But it was wow, God, it was it was really just sad That's yeah like much. a new york like a new like a downtown like new york city apartment would be like a luxury apartment like is like a it's bigger than like some of the apartments they live in in japan it's not as bad as china but it's uh it's still yeah it's a lot smaller living mm. um but yeah that was just the japanese one the american one is still normal and it's that it's just, just a fun show to watch uh I listened to Run the Jewels 4 because I've that just came out a couple of days ago. And yeah, I've never, what is that? What? What is that? It's a, it's a, it's a wow. rap group. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. And I've never really given them a chance. And I listened to the fourth album and I was like, oh, this is really good. And so I've been listening to a lot of RTJ. You've never given Run the Jewels a chance? No, I've never <laughs> given them a chance. Jesus Christ, Ryan. Oh, I know, right? How dare I not wow. know every single rap group ever? <laughs> yeah. It's fucking yeah, name every, Mike, name dude. every rap album, Hunter. <laughs> I was Mike, actually man. the reason that I uh that I, I gave it a listen was because I listened to uh Killer Mike give his speech when the whole riots and stuff were kicking off and I was kind of inspired. And so I wanted to listen to what his music was like. And it's 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 very similar too. He likes to he did, he raps about politics a lot and what's going on and did you the watch his Netflix world. show? Yeah, I watched that before. I, that, I watched that beforehand, even yeah. like before I listened to his music. I thought that was cool. Um, 
And then also another cool thing that's kind of come out of this coronavirus has been uh, a lot of like uh, old casts from TV shows and movies and stuff have gotten back together and done like script readings. Um, and I listened to uh, a couple of days ago, the, the original cast of like Lord of the Rings. They, um, I still need to watch that. You watched it? I still need to oh, watch it. It was really good. And they got everyone, literally everyone in the fellowship. They got side characters. They got Peter Jackson. They got the composer of the music um, to get on there and talk. That was really, yeah. really cool. And like, it's cool to hear how passionate they were about that and how like, it's still considered like all of them is like, that's the best thing we ever did. And it still holds like, it's, it's in really high regards for all of us. So that was cool. And it made me want to watch the Lord of the Rings movies again. So I'm probably going to do that after I finish Rebels. <laughs> nice. Like the millionth time. You doing the extended cuts this or is, you doing the... Uh, absolutely. The you got to do the extended. <laughs> this is going to get me a lot of judgment here. I've only ever seen Fellowship of the Ring extended. I've never seen two, uh, uh, the Two Towers or the uh, Return of the King. You should watch How did you extended. manage to avoid that? Yeah. <laughs> I want to know. How did I, you I've, to... I've seen the theatrical versions dozens of times. Oh, I've just okay. never watched the extended one. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. There's There's a lot of really I thought good you were content. saying that the only Lord of the Rings that you'd seen was the Fellowship of the Ring extended. No, movie. no. I oh, would I leave without knowing how this right ends. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <no. laughs> the greatest <laughs> stories of all time. That was great. Yeah. No. No, I fucking love those movies. Yeah, they're fantastic. I, watch I own them editions. too. I own, I own the extended editions. I just haven't watched. Watch them. Wow. There you go. I need to. They're they're, they're real f- piece of shit. I know they're fucking good, dude. Best movies of all times. I really want them to come out with like a Netflix documentary about like the behind the scenes of all that shooting and use all the footage and stuff like that in interviews. I'd watch the fuck out of that. You mean the like them filming the movie? Yeah, like, you know how they did, like, the Lord of the Rings video games and, like, you unlocked, like, the bonus content footage of, like, like cast interviews and stuff like that? There's there's so much footage of when they were filming it. The, uh... The... Oh, this thing. <laughs> this thing right here has... With all the extended editions, it has, like, like over 20 hours of, like, behind-the-scenes footage and stuff. Jesus. Like, they, they study this thing in, like, film <laughs> classes. Because, like, they say if you want like, to see, like, how a movie is made, watch, like, all the extra scenes and stuff on this. All right. Well, maybe I'll just have to stop being a lazy piece of shit and get on that. Yeah, you should. Stop being a lazy piece of shit and watch it's that like, movie. It's such a good fucking trilogy. <laughs> get off your ass and get on your ass, boy. Get off your <laughs> ass and right. get on your ass. <laughs> <laughs> um... And then uh, last thing uh, was uh, I, I listened to the the next insane clown posse album, which is the uh, um, the, the the amazing Jekyll Brothers. Uh, and that was an interesting. When you say last, did you mean like the last one they've put out? No, no. We're we're, we're oh. only up to 1999. <laughs> okay. Although they they did have like a big hiatus between like 2001 and 2012, so. There is a block there. I think there's only like eight albums, and this is like number four, I think. So I, I will say I have seen them live, and they did a fucking awesome job. Yeah. Um, like they came out in a giant because it took them an hour and a half to set up on stage at the masquerade, which I'm I sure. was like, bro, it's it's eleven o'clock on a goddamn Tuesday. Can you please get the fuck on? Like, I've, I've got literally work at 7 the next morning. 12.30, they come on. They're in a giant, like, G.I. Joe action figure box together. It was really fucking cool. That sounds awesome. And then I got covered in Fago. Yeah, I bet. I didn't... I didn't so much Fago. I didn't realize how much Fago was actually involved with their shows until I watched the live <laughs> show, and they do actually bring... Like, like, oh, fucking yeah. they go through like, th- like over a thousand dollars worth of Fago. Yeah, like, each time they go. Yeah, I, during this this album is when Woodstock '99 happened, and so I'm like, I gotta watch this because this is one of their most famous performances. If you know anything about Woodstock '99, like the show in itself was a shit show. Outside of the ICP performance, I'm pretty sure that's the one uh, where Limp Biscuit like started a riot. Fuck Limp Biscuit. Yeah, they had like women were raped in the in the crowd and. 
They were just tearing like poles down and fires were started. It's good times. Fred Durst is a piece of shit, and I will take all criticism. Fuck <laughs> Limp Biscuit. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't think there are any <laughs> avid Limp Biscuit fans out there that are going to come after you. My yeah, girlfriend dude. loves Limp Biscuit. Unsubscribed. Okay? She's from Flor. <laughs> she's from Florida, though, so like it's understanding. Yeah, but, like, she likes Limp Biscuit. She likes ICP. She thinks Post Malone's attractive. I mean, it's just like the you yeah. know, it's the culmination of Florida. Just Florida you know things, I mean? you know. Just, How does she feel Florida about things. Disturbed? <laughs> Is she down uh, with the not a fan? I'm a huge fan of Disturbed, though. Fair enough. <laughs> down with the sickness was my first metal song. But yeah, so sorry, the Woodstock sorry, show was ahead. fucking crazy, dude. They had, they just kept bringing girls on stage and ripping their tops off and then pouring fag all over their naked bodies and stuff. And they'd have dudes come on stage and they'd pull their cocks out and they'd pour fag all over their, their dick. <laughs> stuff. They'd be like, I don't care, get up unreal. here. As long, as long as you weren't fat. That was the thing that was kind of crazy to me is they'd have big girls come on stage and be like, mm, get out of here. Security, get them out of here. We don't want them. <laughs> we want the hot girls with the big titties. I feel like 90% oh of Juggalo girls are just big girls. Like, I know, it's, it's but they, yeah, and that's the thing was like, clearly, like, it was just girls that were at Woodstock 99 and were blackout drunk, didn't realize that they were at an ICP concert. We're like, oh, no. get on stage anyways. Oh, my God. Yeah. They were probably on acid, actually. It probably wasn't even beer. <laughs> it's probably just like tripping their they balls. Were, they were on something. Um, <laughs> having a but, good time. So, yeah, around this time is when ICP was trying to get more street cred. Uh, they were trying to be a more uh, serious taken band, even though all their lyrics were still extremely vulgar and white trash <laughs> and stuff. I don't know what they were thinking. But the way they did that was they were like, we've got to get some, some primo uh, features and stuff on this album. So they, the first person they went after was Snoop Dogg, who they successfully got. They paid him like $40,000, and he did a feature on a song called The Shaggy Show, and the song was terrible. It was so bad. It wasn't even like a rap song. It was literally them just like joking around and be like, all right, I'm going to do a verse. I'm Violent J, and they would do a verse and be like, well, I'm Shaggy too. I'm going to do a verse. Here comes Snoop Dogg. And Soup Dog rapped for like 20 seconds, and you can tell he didn't even want to be there. And that was that. <laughs> so, definitely disappointing. Although they had another feature that was awesome. They had one ODB do a feature, and apparently when he showed to the studio, he was blackout drunk. And, you, on, on and you could, like, apparently they, they'd written they lyrics for him, and he couldn't even read the paper. He was so fucking drunk. And so he just kept rapping around bitches, just sick, keep saying bitches over and over again, and then I'm calling the song <laughs> bitches, and they just took whatever they could, and they put it in the song. And it actually ended up being oh one God. of my favorite songs on the album. <laughs> I'm calling. <Don't> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, that was... Leave uh, it to the Wu-Tang Clan. <laughs> um, and uh, this was the album that had Fuck the World on it, and that song uh, blew up a, a lot because the song is pretty fucking crazy. They say fuck 93 times. Yeah, something like that. They upset a lot of people with that song. In fact, the apparently the the manager of ICP at the time was also managing the Beastie Boys. And Beastie, they say fuck the Beastie Boys in that song. And the Beastie Boys went to the manager and said, you got to get rid of these guys. We, you can't say that. No, we're the Beastie Boys. We're sick. Fuck those guys. And they're just like, all right, what do you... It's ICP. You know, they're going to say shit. <laughs> They're Floridians in clown makeup. Like, yeah. take it. Like, come right. on, now, bro. Um, I liked uh, another love song. That's one of their more popular songs now, too. And uh, Assassins, which for some reason they like to close out like all their shows with is Assassins. I don't know why, but they like that. It's song. another love song. The one where they talk about stuffing the dead cat in the mailbox. Uh, which one? There's, there's one. That I've heard that a lot. Oh, okay. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm glad that's a. I'm glad that's a. That's a repetitive theme. A reoccurring the theme. The the, the yeah. dead cats. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah, and also uh, another cool thing, Kevin. This is they made a movie that went along with the album, where the album, uh, all the music from that was in the movie. Was it the cowboy movie that they did? No, the no. This was this was Big Bunny Huskies. Excuse me. Big and money it, hustles. it was made for I think two hundred fifty thousand dollars is what they said the uh, the budget was for. Jesus. And it was made by a director who at the time was known for like making like really low budget like indie films that were like purposely really bad. 
Oh, like asylum films. Mm. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, that's I, kinda. But like way, way more lower budget. Oh wow. Yeah. And so the premise of the movie is is you have uh, obviously Violent J and Shaggy Two Dope are the two main characters. Violent J is uh it takes place in New York City, but it's obviously filmed in Detroit. Um <laughs> Violent J is he plays like a mob boss, and he's got these, uh, he's got two cronies. I don't know if you've ever heard of a band called, or a, a rap duo called Twisted, but they did a lot of tours and stuff with ICP back in the day. And they played like two retarded characters who just were just like the, the goons and stuff that Violent J would just make fun of the entire time. Um, and then you had Shaggy Two Dope, who was a, uh, he worked for the police office. He was trying to take down. Uh, Violent, oh, wow. Violent J. And, uh, Please tell me they were in clown makeup the entire time. Yes, movie. they were clown makeup. Oh, they were the God. only ones too. And that nobody even mentioned it. It was just like, yeah. They, they're just, they've got clown makeup on. We're not going to say anything about it. Like, there's a police officer, but he's got clown makeup on. <laughs> and the funny thing is, is like, all the police officers are super corrupt and like, they're all working for Violent J, except for Chaggy Two Dope and one of this other police officer who are the only clean ones. Um, I don't want to say too much because I really think you should go watch it. It is hilarious, like from start to finish, and there's some really funny cameos and stuff in it. But I think the highlight of the movie is they have they go to a, uh, a strip club, right? Uh, Shaggy and his uh, <laughs> his 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 partner in crime, and Shaggy falls in love with a woman who is morbidly obese, and she she has like yeah. a like a ten minute long strip scene where she's showing her titties and everything, and playing with them. And and then he's he's like he falls in love with her and he's like buying her Fago and stuff like to try to like win oh, her over. Like, <laughs> of course and they he, have Fago. Yeah, yeah. He's at a bar and he's like <laughs> and he's like give her the good stuff and he, he pours Fago into a glass and hands it to her. <laughs> <laughs> and he he seduces her right and and then there's like a, a really like unnecessarily long sex scene between him. The girl, where he's just like <laughs> feeding her muffins and cake and stuff, and pouring Fago in her mouth while he's humping her. Jesus Christ! Yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah, there's, there's, and I think the movie's like sponsored by Taco Bell or something because there's a lot of Taco Bell in there. <laughs> Probably not. I don't know if Taco Bell would do that. They, they just, just really, really like Taco, Taco Bell. Bell. The cheapest thing they could buy for the staff in, in bulk. <laughs> I, I mean, they just like Taco Bell and Fago. So, like every tacos meal they for have, eight dollar deal, you can't pass that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you get the family size taco pack, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, there's some some cool professional wrestler cameos that are pretty funny. Uh, I'd give it a, a an eleven out of ten. Eleven great, out of great ten. Movie. Wow. The highest movie. honors. Yeah, the album itself was okay. Not as great as the Great Blanco, but it, it 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 had some some songs on it that were good. That that uh to this day or still consider their best songs but i mean fuck the world's probably like in their top five most known songs yeah just because that, that song got really big outside of like their fans a lot of a lot of controversy so that was my week yeah well that's good that's good nice. hunter how was your week well as i said earlier i'm supposed to be at fucking bonnaroo right now um <laughs> And I'm not because of a global health pandemic. So, you know, that's super cool. Um, work's been pretty shitty. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of losing my mind at this point. Sounds like your life sucks. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's <laughs> did. Did 2020 sucks, <laughs> man. 2020 was supposed to be a good fucking year. It was supposed to be like, oh, man, here we go. Like... I'm leaving kind of my college era behind. I'm I'm bl blossoming into young adulthood and blossoming you know, into a just, woman. Yeah, blossoming into a, a, a not a, a not a girl, but a, a woman. You know, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I and there's a lot of responsibility that comes with blossoming into a woman. And uh, you know, I, I was ready to meet those challenges, and I was ready to kind of like take 2020 on with an iron fist, and uh, it just kind of smacked me down. In fucking February, so that's well, pretty Ryan's cool. Go break yeah, and then season. Ryan's just gonna leave in the middle of me explaining these things. So that's <laughs> also like, pretty cool. This. <laughs> I'm out of here. But yeah, man, um, kind of uh, building my own garage gym 
and uh, that's kind of coming together pretty good. Um, that's good. I've got like a nice big fan in there now, and uh, I've got like a you know what a power tower is? Absolutely not. So a power tower is um, you see them in practically all gyms. It's it's kind of it's the thing that's got the uh, it's got a pull up bar on it, and it's got a dip bar on it. And you can do like ab extensions with it where you kind of lean forward and you hold it <laughs> and you can, you know, move your abs. Yeah, sorry. For all the audio listeners out there, Ryan just walked back in with a giant ass bag of food. <laughs> wow. <laughs> there it is. Uh, burgers and fries. Oh, burgers excuse and fries. me. There you go. Oh, that was five guys. I recognize that bag anywhere. Very nice. did you, sorry. Did sorry, you just spend yeah, $16 so on a fucking hamburger? <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's good. Good. And uh, <laughs> what else was I saying? I completely forgot. You're talking about your power tower in your home gym and how oh, 2020 yeah. sucks. Yeah, yeah. So 2020 is just fucking going rough. But uh, now let me ask you a question, Hunter. If they didn't cancel Bonnaroo and COVID was still going on and all this, would you have gone? No. Okay. I'm not. I'm not going in September. I wouldn't go now. I'm not going in September. Sure. <laughs> I'm getting my full refund. And hey, there's some people that just say, I don't give a fuck because they just straight up don't believe in it. No. That's true. So, like. Yeah, I, uh, I think if they had it, I think because of it's mostly just 20 year olds, I think, you know, it wouldn't be them to be hurt. It would be their fucking parents. Yeah. Uh, that's fair. Yeah. And it's also like, it's over like 100. 50,000 people I think it's oh my God. it's it's one of the biggest festivals in the country so I don't think it would happen and uh it sucks man I haven't been since 2016 I was super pumped to go this year and fucking got canceled so, so I'm supposed and to be drunk as shit right now with Ryan and I'm not wow you're supposed to be watching Tool perform right now I'm Tool supposed to have Friday. already seen Tool Supposed to have oh, seen Tool me. and Miley Cyrus on Friday. Damn. And I'm man. not. So. Shane. Now, do you think they're going to have the same lineup in September? No. They're. It's, they've, already, they've already had some bands say they're going to come out and other ones were like, we can't make it. But yeah. the reality is it's probably not going to happen anyway. So. That's yeah. fair. I yeah. highly doubt it. But. Yep. Yeah. So Indeed. that that's going on. And then uh I don't know if you guys know about this fucking autonomous zone in Seattle, but oh yeah. It's kind of something I want to talk about cuz it's kind of strange. Um Oh lord. So there's a six block zone in Seattle called Cap Hill. And the citizens of Cap Hill have reclaimed Cap Hill as a Cap Hill autonomous zone and it's nicknamed Chaz. And uh, they've kicked all the police out. It's this crazy social experiment that's going on right now that I think we're all going to be seeing in textbooks here in like 10 years. But it's, uh, it's also, it's got this strange element to, there's this alleged shit going on in Chaz right now with a guy named Raz, who apparently has claimed himself and his cronies as the de facto police department and the whole purpose of Chaz was to kick the de police department out. Right. And there's already been video surfacing of Raz pretty much doing vigilante police brutality on Chaz citizens, even though the whole purpose of setting up Chaz was to get police brutality out of Chaz. And, uh, but at the same time, if you look at Raz's Twitter, Raz's Twitter page looks like it's all about community and it's all about expressing your your views through protests. You're giving out like free food and water and shit. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of like kumbaya kind of stuff on Raz's Twitter. And if you look on the Chaz, the Cap Hill Autonomous Zone subreddit, uh, it's kind of in the same vein where, you know, there's just, there's a bunch of posts about like cultivating potatoes in an urban environment and stuff like that. Like real, like we're off the grid kind of stuff. But there's also this it seems like the right really wants to push this zone 
to be a failed state so that society thinks or society sees that you have to have police but then the left wants to dismiss dismiss any kind of problems that are coming with this because they want everybody in society to see this kumbaya scenario and believe that we don't need police so there's two like wildly opposite ends of the spectrum here that both have their own agenda with the portrayal of Chaz and I don't know which side to believe so yeah because you you said they kicked out the police I've heard reports that the police just straight up were like fuck this shit and they just yeah. abandoned it so they originally kicked out the police and then there's been a couple instances of them citizens in Chaz calling the police and then having the 911 dispatcher say like no you guys can handle that right now and I think that's the police want citizens in Chaz to see that they need the fucking police. So the police are just like, fine, fucking do it. See how it goes. Yeah, and, but that's not their job to dictate that. <laughs> well, somebody's telling them to do that, which is why I, I can't. I, I, if I call the police and I'm like, there's a man in my house, the police can't be like, well, do you want a gun? Well, then you can deal with that. Yeah. That's not that. That's not their job to say deal with that. But I kind of, <laughs> I don't think it's them doing that. I think it's somebody dictating them to do that. I think I'm putting on my conspiracy hat here. Somebody in the higher up is telling the police department not to do anything in Chaz so that Fox News can keep perpetrating Chaz as this like crazy zone where people are just being burned alive in the streets because of just anarchy and chaos and all this kind of stuff. So I don't know if Raz has just kind of been caught up in this. I don't know if Raz is like a manchurian candidate who's kind of been propped up by the right to make this place look shitty i don't know what's going on but it's just this crazy scenario that's happening in right now in seattle where it's kind of like a 2020 waco situation and uh yeah man i i i think we're gonna see some fireworks pop off in that fucking place pretty quick see i want to see the opposite end of this i want to see austin texas six blocks <laughs> alex jones rises as the leader oh my god and i need this i need an info wars like a like foreign state in oh texas i'd be there yeah i need it i'd be there um, I'd i don't know if that would work. I, I don't know if it would work out in austin because it's it's not working in seattle right now or at least it's again i don't well, know what's going on really but from an outsider looking in it's not working in seattle because raz was the only one that had guns and he's the only one that was able to ascend to power but if you do that in Texas, everyone has a gun. So yeah, I yeah. think it would. Honestly, it's fair game. I right. think it would it's work better game. in Texas Wait, because like, everybody could just be like, "Yeah, I've, I've got my gun." Come you're like, "Oh, you're pointing a gun at me? Hey, look over there. There's just like a fucking militia." And you're like, "Hey, what? What up? Like, let's fucking go, dude." Yeah, yeah I feel like we literally did this whole autonomous, policeless state thing for like a hundred years when we did the Wild West. Like, literally, Western expansion was that. The whole time we were doing it and then we were like yeah this doesn't work and we decided to do like an actual like centralized police because like otherwise you end up with like whoever has a gun and shoots the guy in charge is now in charge yeah, it's like yeah. it's yeah. Just like you know it's like oh you're the sheriff bam it's now public I'm the sheriff. perception on who's the good or the bad guy with yeah. the gun exactly. Yeah, exactly which is exactly so it, what's playing out right now with raz it's good or bad perception because yeah. and like literally i'm telling you I, I i just created a twitter account and I'm uh, kind of playing around with it and I'm looking around at the different sides of the Raz debate and there's literally people that are saying, you know, that's his right. He's bringing his community together for protest and they need some form of police and that's just his role that he's taking. And then there's, well, that's the left, but then there's the right that's saying like there's reports of him going to local businesses and demanding shakedown protection money in the form of Bitcoin and that he's... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he's apparently shaking down people for Bitcoin, and uh, that. <laughs> Jesus and then I see videos of him, or, or what I believe to be him, because he claims that he is the police, and and his cronies, and they're they're literally assaulting some guy for like graffitiing a wall. So it's, I don't know what to believe. I really don't. And then you have the libertarians in the middle, just like yes, yes, <laughs> oh yes, God. just freaking the fuck out, like. <laughs> Like, like anarchy. Right, they're just like yeah, raising their AR fifteens above their heads. Like, Arr! yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It's just> like, <laughs> I really think government. though it's it's one of the best arguments for why everybody should have a gun. I mean, for sure. I mean, yeah. Like, 
Like, yeah, what are you going to do like, when someone just starts that, like, tells you that your neighborhood is under their protection and you need to, like, yeah. and, and you, you need, need to give to them, them three Bitcoin. <laughs> I don't have oh, any man. Bitcoin. I don't have any they, Bitcoin. Like, imagine them, like, you, you trying to, like, make you some. make an account to, like, add Bitcoin into your wallet and, like, oh, you're just going to buy here and, and so, like, you just they like just break into your home and no. force you to use your computer for for fucking I don't know how to buy Bitcoin. No, I'll show you. <laughs> well, I've also heard reports that they ran out of food after like two days because they were just giving out free food to people, and apparently they're out of food. But that's is that real or is that fake? I can't tell. I don't know. Yeah, that's that's, that's 2020 in a nutshell. Is how much bullshit am I being fed with each news story? It seems like it's a lot, right? It seems like it's growing like is it a tablespoon? <laughs> is it a teaspoon or is it like a like a fucking ladle of shit that's being fed into my mouth? <laughs> you just have to take it. Like how much? How yeah. much can we lie to them? <laughs> like there's there's a small amount of fecal matter. No matter what story you're getting, it just depends on how. much much fecal matter you're getting we're like literally in a 1984 scenario we don't even know it <laughs> it's just like i just i, I, I genuinely doors. do not go outside <laughs> I, i've always been one to think that i can stay away from sensationalized news and i have a i have the ability to kind of find what's real and what's not but with this shit i really cannot figure out what's real and what's not and it's it's terrifying. I mean, it could not. It, it literally could just not be happening. There, there could be nothing going on in Cap Hill right now. And just from what I've been fed, I think there's this dude that's just taken over. Yeah. I, I don't well, fucking and know. And not to get too like, not to get too like, consp- you know, conspiratorial about it, but like CNN's been caught running fake stories. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, it was an intern and they did some shit. And then Fox News just like yesterday got caught photoshopping some random militant guy. Onto like into the streets of Seattle. It's like yeah, that was both that terrible. was that was for the Chaz coverage. So they took <laughs> yeah. they took um like one of the the pictures for the article t- talk, talking about Chaz was like just the streets burning, and that was in Minnesota during <laughs> yeah. the fucking Floyd riots, like right when they started. Yeah. So it's just oh my god, complete nonsense. I I don't know if it's this kumbaya scenario that's actually working to some degree, or if it's utter chaos. I don't know. Right. Yeah. You know what? Let's road trip it, Hunter. Let's go. Yeah, let's, let's, get, let's get boots on the ground. Let's go see the chat. Way to find out. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're going in deep. We'll stream live from the, uh, from yeah. the protest. I will stream live from Chaz. Honestly, yeah. there's And a... then it turns into like a horror movie where we're just running away from like a militant group. And it just turns into like... <laughs> It just turns into like a, oh fuck, what's that? It just turns into like a weird Jonestown situation where they invite the journalists in, and then they realize that that was the worst move they could do, and they start murdering the journalists. Oh my god! But what um, if we like? So they have Twitch uh, called Woke that literally live streams yeah. protests. Um, yeah, and so yeah. like, I mean, there are like you can see kind of like on the ground, but it's like usually pretty tame. Like the police just stand there, the protesters just stand there, everybody's standing and then around. And there's one or two people that run out, and then they respond. And yeah, it's exactly. Just, yeah. It's just, it's pretty lame. I was like, if I showed up to that, I'd be I'd be out in like a heartbeat. I'd just be like, all right, this fucking sucks. I'm out of here. Yeah, yeah. Just... they had a on that on that woke page. They did have the Wendy's burning down last night here in oh, uh, really? Atlanta. Oh, shit. Oh, Some guy was there. Oh man! And uh, it was on woke, so I was watching the Wendy's get burned down. <laughs> <laughs> That'll stop them. Not the fr- not the fresh, never frozen patty, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you guys know they they canceled Live PD too because of this? Yeah, they canceled oh, Live really? PD. Cops, all those have been. Postponed they canceled Paw suspended. Patrol. What? Paw, Paw Patrol. The, the Paw Patrol one? is canceled now. That's well, insane. Oh man. Well, actually, Live 2020 has gone too far. Live PD <laughs> was actually in trouble before all the riots came out because apparently they someone was killed while they were recording stuff for Live yeah, PD in Austin. Yeah, so I don't know where it was, but then and so they they had already taken Live PD off the air before the George Floyd stuff started. Yeah, so in Williamson County, Texas, which is the county right above Austin, which is this crazy fucking county that you have Travis County, which is Austin, and it's kind of a hippy dippy granola county. And then you have Williamson County, which is kind of like the white flight, Incredible rich conservative county. county. And uh, apparently they've had some trouble with Live PD in the past because there was a sheriff that was sexually assaulting one of the Live PD producers or something like that. Oh, Jesus. And uh, 
so they pulled out of Williamson County and then they think they signed another contract and went back. And I think somebody ended up being killed on live PD in Williamson County. So they canceled live PD. Damn. Um, it's almost like, Hey, if you, if you're basing a show around action and there's police involved who are trained to use deadly force in situations, it's almost like that's going to like, well, the fun well, part was ahead eventually. obviously like live PD isn't totally live because then, you know, you might accidentally show yeah, someone getting yeah. murdered on the air. And or so, like somebody's personal information or something. Yeah, like and that. so live PD apparently had the footage of the person being killed and the, like the courts went after him and said, we need that footage. And they said, no, they deleted it. <laughs> oh, what? That's, yeah. that's insane. Yeah, yeah that's... That, that's why live PD got in trouble. That's Jeez, crazy. Yeah. So they were like basically aiding the police in like whatever thing they were doing or something. Yeah, or I guess that? maybe the police department went to him and said, "We gotta get rid of this footage right now." Oh I, man, I don't, I don't know. That's crazy. No, I bet what that's that exactly say? what happened. <laughs> that's like that's that's insane. Yeah. yeah. It it feels like 2020 has either been like a pretty decent year or like a terrible year for like everyone. Like nobody's just kind of like I don't know. I'm kind of like in the middle of it, but like what's been decent? I also don't leave my house, so <laughs> like you know. Yeah, for the, the yeah. Neats are doing they're doing great right now. You know. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 If you're like, <laughs> if you're like an otaku, under your if, the otaku's are rising up. Yeah, yeah you're like, like I don't, you our, our numbers are greater than they've ever been. <laughs> Absolutely, your mom brings you a, a plate of chicken tenders. You just sit back. and yeah, you, you read yeah. your 4chan articles, and you, you're all nice and Absolutely. cozy. Absolutely. <laughs> the, the worst thing that's happened to otaku's this year is B got deleted. Oh. Oh, really? B got deleted. I think B got they got rid of B, which was probably for the best because that's like literally like the scummiest place on the internet. <laughs> oh, there's definitely scummier board or boards on 4chan for sure. Oh, oh yeah, like, I think that. Yeah, I mean but, our poll is. I mean poll is probably like. Yeah, just a bit rough. <laughs> yeah, I love size G. Oh, it's the most publicized. That's probably why they got rid of it because like everyone knew about it, and so they yeah. just like yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've learned so much shit on slash G. It's not even funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so Hunter's week has, a few weeks has been terrible, but you know, you're in our thoughts and prayers, Hunter. <laughs> thoughts and I, prayers. I'm, I'm just tired of being stuck in my house, man. I want to, I don't know, man. I need to. We're going for a jog, bud. No, I mean, I do that. I'm, I'm stuck in my neighborhood, I should say. I just don't leave. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, interesting. I, I just could, right? It could technically, but I don't want, I don't know, man. <laughs> Nobody in Texas is really taking this shit seriously. And then I'll I'll hop on Reddit and I can't tell if again I'm just stuck in a fucking social media vortex where I'll see this like huge disgusting picture of just this mangled lung from a fucking 30-year-old woman for with yeah. covid. <laughs> yeah. And you're just like, I, "I don't want my fucking lungs mangled." And uh then you don't want to leave your house and then you get scared. And uh That's fair. Yeah, and then I have a buddy I, I I have a buddy over the other day who's a firefighter and he's out in a bunch of EMS situations and he's trying to tell me that like, dude, corona's overblown, like it does you know, it, 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 unless you're elderly or a kid, like you're fine, and it's just like I who do I believe? Like <laughs> right. Who knows? What, I don't know which one's the ladle of shit, which one's the teaspoon. Like, I'm scared. Yeah. Yeah, no, for like, sure. I mean, like, no, there's just... probably to some degree it's overblown, but, like, there are, like, a ton of really ridiculous edge cases. Like, where you get, like, a rash on your body, like, it happens to younger people, you get, like, a red rash all on your whole body, and then you just can't breathe, and you start oozing pus, and it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't want that. that. I don't want that just at all. The fact that there's <laughs> even, like, a 5% chance that that could happen to you, I don't want that. Yeah, it's, it's kind of rough. <laughs> I don't want that. And actually, I've been getting upset because, like, a lot of people, like, construction-wise, a lot of people want work done now. Like, that Rhode Island's opening up, and it's like, I don't want to work for you. I don't want to go in your house. But, like, it, like if you say no to them now, you're not going to get the business ever. And so it's like... They'll just go to the yeah, other person exactly, who's right. And so it. it's just, it's rough because it's like, you know, you want to be good, but you also, like... And also, you're, like, you're fucked if you do, work. you're fucked if you don't. Right. There's no winning. And I can't legally take unemployment if I have the option to be employed. Like it's like it's yeah. a, like the, the it's allowing it to happen. But I'm like walking into people's houses and touching all their shit and breathing their air and so. And it's like, <laughs> what if I had it, dude? Like what? Like why do you want me in your house? That's like that's yeah. the question for me. It's like, 
I don't know. It's 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 frustrating. And I am a person that likes to stay home. So like I had a great excuse for however long and they start opening shit back up again and I'm like, damn it. <laughs> I wanted to stay yeah, home. Yeah, you're I, I'm sitting here like, no, <laughs> no. Please. No, my postmates discount code. <laughs> yeah, you're like you yeah, you work from home anyways. You're just <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm I'm just being fat and staying at home. It's that's, that's it's, fair it's pretty decent. <laughs> but woe is me, you know what I mean? So outside of scuba diving and construction, David, is there anything else you've been in, in having disgusting poison ivy hands? Is there anything that you've been uh, you've been doing um, with your week, two still, weeks? Still haven't made any progress on the drone, but that's because I've been distracted with getting my stream stuff set up. Um, I still have a battery, like a like a AC power supply to my camera coming in. Oh, oh he's dead again. <sighs> so unprofessional. Dude. God. Fuck Discord. I want to know what the problem is. <laughs> like, I really want to know. It happens so often. It's like, this This one is the worst because, like, both times you ask me a question and it's like, eh, <laughs> it's just, and it's gone. And it's gone. <laughs> right. But I'm getting like a power cord for my camera because right now I'm running on batteries. So if we were to do like a three, four hour podcast, I wouldn't be able to keep up. But, um, That's fair. like, streaming, I, I'm for sure going to go for four hours. So it's, what are you going to do? Um, yeah. But, for the most part, I mean, just sticking around, um, doing a lot of construction. I built a dock the other day, which was pretty fun. Um, first time I ever oh, did that, yeah. so that was pretty cool. And then um, a little bit of fishing here and there. But th literally, apparently, all the fish are late, like, this year. So, like, everyone's saying that they're getting skunked. And so that's a weird thing. Like, we're halfway into the June, and no one's caught a fish. <laughs> like, like everyone's oh, just fuck. like, I can't even find fish. Like, there's no striper up here. There's and no... it's a good thing we're it's not like a national meat sort shortage or anything yeah, right now. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like it's Christ. really weird. Everyone's like, wow, we don't like. Why are they not here? And like, so like, both all the lobsters aren't coming. All the fish aren't coming. Like, it's it's really weird. It's like maybe this is the end of the world. Sometimes you look at the little like kind of sounds like, like it. Uh, <laughs> feels like <laughs> this it. Could be it. it kind of, um, I kind almost, of feels like it. <laughs> I almost blew my house up uh, trying to replace a gas dryer. Uh, that was fun. Oh, that's exciting. Yeah, the shut up at the street didn't close all the way, so I like ended up taking <laughs> one of the pipes off and just like, whoosh, I'm like, oh no, <laughs> like, like just like you're <laughs> hurriedly like turning it back on, like no, put the pipe back, put the pipe back. <laughs> that would have been interesting. Was, yeah, so we had to have the National Grid people come out and and fix our house, which National Grid's the power supplier for the Northeast, like all the states in the Northeast, but. So that was that was a fun, interesting weekend. It was just that's like, a hey, shit, that's shit. a shit your pants moment. <laughs> exactly. Right there. I got like, and it was like I got oxygen deprivation because I had to stick around and like reseal this shit because otherwise it's not gonna air out. And so like I had a headache and I felt a little tired. And I'm like I'm going outside oh, for a man. bit. And I'm like I hope I didn't make myself really sick for no reason. That was a scary time. <laughs> and like you have to hurry too, but you can't make sparks because you're like I don't know how much gas is in the air. Fuck it. <laughs> you're like. Jesus. It was bad, yeah. <laughs> it was. It was a. It's that a, movie scene where somebody across the room's like lighting up a cigarette. And you're like, no. <laughs> well, my my roommate turned on a light, like, like turn. Oh no, turn oh, off a light. And I was like, you idiot! Like, <laughs> like it still sparks when you turn off the light. Don't do that. What the fuck? Like, thank God we didn't have like the old timey switches because otherwise that would have done us in. <laughs> like, oh my god, damn, damn it's it. terrifying. Yeah, it was. It was. It was a little terrifying. It's kind of terrifying realizing that your house could literally just explode at any given moment. Right, and it's yeah. just, like, it's, and it's just a pop. Like, there's no time. There's no like timer or anything. Yeah, it just, just in case happens. you're worried about anything else in 2020, just you know, your house could explode. Right. Oh, dude, that would be the worst. Mid global <laughs> health pandemic and like glooming recession, your house and explodes. Now you're homeless because your house exploded. <laughs> Everything's out of stock. Oh my god! Everything you own, your car, whatever, it's all gone. You, you own just nothing. Be <laughs> it's just your yeah, and you work from home, so like, what do you do? It's just oh, over. Man. Just it's game over, man. Oh, oh that's, man, that's, that's so. Are you are you like a contractor? I thought you. Yes. I thought you were a programmer. I do both. Well, I, I went to school for programming and I do it on the side. Um, but I, as a living, make make my money, my big bucks as a contractor. Um, right now, mostly handyman work because no one wants to start a big truck project like with COVID going on. But um, yeah, do all sorts oh. of stuff. I am not a licensed gas plumber. I will say, say that. Um, but it is my abode or like the abode of someone that asked me to do it for them. So it didn't have to happen that way. No money was exchanged. Just just for the legal side of it. There was no money exchanged. I didn't have to be licensed. <laughs> the disclaimer. Fuck you. <laughs> Get him <them> Trump. <laughs> Reported. Reporting right now. You're but, going to jail, kid. I'm calling the IRS. 
Wait a minute, that's yeah. illegal. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> but yeah. So that's fun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Having fun times. Yeah. Um two weeks. I have done not I don't want to say not a lot, but like nothing to really like further society, I guess I should say. That's typically my life though. Um Did you did you top off your P jug? I topped off the pee jug. Good, good. Uh, I know you were you know, been hard throwing those out in the yard. Yeah. The pee jug garden. Out the window. Out right the now. window, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the neighbors love that, especially in a townhome society. Sure. It's great. Sure, just yeah. having pee jugs all over. That's just the way she fucking goes, uh, man. That's just the way of the road, you know? Um I started a show. I've been I, I've I've stopped watching as much Criminal Minds. Criminal Minds is still a great show. Fuck you, Hunter. That's a great show. <laughs> I've gotten to the point, though, that, like, five minutes into each episode, I can already call who, like, the killer is and everything, because it's just a set pattern. Right. You're not supposed to binge watch that show. It's literally the same show, but, like, well, what if this person was that person? You're like, whoa, whoa! You know, Dr. Reed's just like, oh, my God, the Rosetta Stone actually predicted this in XYZ, and I've got a photogenic memory, and I remember that, and they're like... Get 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 Morgan to the house now, and then you know, and then he kills the guy, and then that's the end of the episode, you know. But uh, the Last Kingdom on Netflix is fucking amazing. Okay, it is so good. Never heard of it. It's about um, the Danes invading England back in like the nine hundreds. Oh, Su- I think nine hundred. I don't know. Super fucking great. Awesome, great show. Watch that. It's tremendous. Is there gratuitous it's nudity? Super- there's a lot of nudity in it. Okay. There's a lot of nudity in that. A lot of gore. <laughs> it's great. It's everything I want. Good. Good. It, it it's filled the hole in my heart that Game of Thrones left for like like fan like medieval shit. Male and female. I don't think I've seen a penis. No wieners. No wieners. I think there's been a few booty shots, but I don't think there's been straight up <laughs> like oh that's that, that balls dude's yet? balls. I saw, let's put it this way, I think I saw more genitals on that Discord call the other day than I have in the entire three seasons I've watched of, uh, of, of Last Kingdom. Okay, alright. Well, oh, that's kind of um, Ryan, why did you yeah, keep showing us your cock in that Discord call? It was really awkward. Yeah, Ryan wouldn't not stop just gaping himself on that Discord call, dude. Like, it was really weird, Fuck, man. dude. No, that's an, that didn't happen. <laughs> it's like, excuse me, what kind of Discord calls do you have without me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was that was a wild. I, I, oh man, God, I, God, I wish we were things. recording Make that. Dude. <laughs> well, if you'd answer my text, David. No. Um, I also watched the uh, movie Valley Girl, which is from 1983, uh, specifically the 1983 version because they remade it. I think in 2019. This is the first ever. Nicolas Cage lead movie. Oh, I thought, I thought and it I gotta sounds say, like a porno at first. <laughs> it was weird. So was a, it a porno? It, a lot of no. Okay. But a lot of people consider it like a classic. It's fucking weird, dude. Uh, I have a bunch of notes written down. They're not in any specific order. Um, but essentially the premise of the movie is there's these four valley girls that live in LA. And then Nicolas Cage is some bad boy from Hollywood. He's like, you know how in like the 80s, there was like the weird like punk goth movement. So there was like a weird like 19 year old Nicolas Cage that was like portraying like an emo 16 year old. It was fucking amazing. His performance, because he wasn't full on like, you know, Cageism where he's like, you know, have you ever seen like the Nicolas Cage Burning Man where he's like, how did it burn? How did it burn? And he's just like screaming at like his supporting actress the entire movie. You get, you start to see the blossoming of what Nicolas Cage would become in this movie. But he's a young lad. It's fucking awesome. Um, this movie had a $600,000 budget. $250,000 of the movie's budget went literally only to the music rights. Wow. There's about, this is like a 90, there's like a 99 minute movie. There's probably 15 minutes of this movie that doesn't have music playing in the background. Which, which, uh, I watched, um, oh fuck, I watched Fast Time at Ridgemont High. I don't know if this was, that was just like an 80s things that they did, where there was just constantly a soundtrack to every goddamn thing that happened, but it was there. Um... 
D the, this was actually uh, fe directed by a female, Martha Coolidge. It was her first ever movie. Wait, I don't know. This wasn't her first ever movie. That was uh, Fast Times. She was given full artistic freedom, but the producers told her that she had to have at least three to four female nude scenes in it in order for her to have that artistic freedom because they wanted to attract a male uh, a male uh, viewership for it. Naturally. There's That's a scene deep. in this movie where it's like a weird party and it's all like the Valley people. And so it's all like, you know, people in collars and all like the LA, like, like, you know, kids of like rich people. Sure Nicholas Cage breaks into this mo breaks into this party, gets kicked out, comes back into the party, hides in the bathtub of a bathroom for like three minutes of airtime, where he watches several people come in, use the bathroom, or have sex, because he's stalking and waiting on one of the chicks from the party in the bathroom. And it goes on for way too long. It is uncomfortable, because you just see this dude come in, and he's taking a shit, and then it just shows, like, Nicolas Cage's face, just like, <laughs> oh, man, like... Ah, oh, he's taking a shit. Or like these people are having sex and he's like peeking out. And it's it's obvious there's a man in the bathroom with these people having sex. Like Nicolas Cage is full on like leaning out of the bathtub. Like, oh, what's going on over there? And then like the chick will look over. He's like, oh, gotta hide back. It's, it's insane. Sounds, sounds um, like a good movie. The script was written in 10 days. Um, it, Rare, interesting thing. There's a club scene... And it was filmed on a Sunset Strip Club named Filthy McNasties back in the 60s and 70s. Uh, in the 80s, it was called The Central. And actually, it is now owned by Johnny Depp. And it's known as The Viper Room. And that's actually where River Phoenix died on Halloween in 1993. That's... So that's just like one of those weird fucking trivia facts that like, what the fuck? Um... <laughs> Another weird, this is the last weird fact about the movie. Uh, I don't know if you guys know who Elizabeth Daly is, but she uh, voiced memorable characters such as Tommy Pickles, uh, Buttercup from the Powerpuff Girls, uh, Rudy Tabuti from Chalk Zone, and if you've ever played Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal, uh, there's the uh, UAC facility voice in the background. I think she's got like the holograms that pop up and she talks to you throughout the thing. That's actually this chick. She's in this movie, and you just straight up see her tits within, like, the first ten minutes of the movie. So it was really weird to me to see, like, the Tommy Pickles voice actress just completely nude in this movie. Um, I nice. would give it a 6 out of 10. If you like the 80s, you'll probably like it as an 8 out of 10. As a Nicolas Cage movie, I'd give it, like, a 7 out of 10. It's really interesting to see him starting to blossom into those Cageisms. But a lot of the movie is just him really drunk or really high, just screaming, and it's fucking amazing. So I'd give it an 8 out of 10 as a Nicolas Cage movie. But that is my week. Oh, very nice. Sounds nice. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. I need to see what movie I need to watch next, actually. But I'm excited. I'm starting to get into, like, the, ra like the, the Air like Raising Arizona and all that. And I'm so excited because I've never seen any of those. I will say Drive Angry is the worst movie that I've ever seen. Like, it is like, it is bottom tier, and I hope you enjoy it. Like, I, I really I hope you watch theaters, it. Like, actually. <laughs> yeah, so did I. Well, <laughs> in, in like 55 to 60 podcasts, we will be talking about Drive That's Angry, and I'm excited enough. about it. Um, do we want to start going through these, these top... Is that top topic there, Hunter? Is that still relevant, the Elon Musk one? Uh, him trying to legalize marijuana on Twitter? Yeah, through Twitter. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we've talked about it yet. What? If Elon Musk legalizes marijuana nationwide... Well, he really he was, was just talking about like how it's one of the main things that gets people arrested in America, and it's you know disproportionately African-Americans and other minorities that get arrested for it. So he kind of made the connection about how, if you want, you know, less police interaction, unnecessary police interaction, it would be a good step to take. And I mean, I, I don't think of anybody would disagree with that. Right. Yeah. Seems legit. Everybody's saying that we should legalize marijuana is just kind of everybody 
everybody rational in America already thinks that. So it, right. <laughs> it's all just kind of at the point where it's just being left on irrational ears. And, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Right. Vote yeah, out of Congress, it's, basically. It's yeah. Maybe that's why his Tesla stock's now above $1,000. Damn, oh, yeah. that over $1,000 a share? Damn, that's... Yeah. Isn't that better than Apple? Isn't that like... Oh, uh, it's way better. I mean, I don't know. So, I, I don't know like how much Apple's like stock... Apple's like $700, but... That's crazy. I don't know how much stock Apple has, uh, like, floating around. But, um... Yeah, Tesla's now, I think... 1,020, something like that. It closed on Friday. Damn. That's so, insane. That is absolutely insane. Maybe that helped. Maybe uh, him saying we should legalize weed got him some some stock brownie points. It's That'd funny nice. that the stock market works like that. Like, instead of like, hey, we made more sales or we're selling a better product, it's like, oh, he says some things that I agree with. I'm buying his stock. And it's like, <laughs> Dude, it's literally like... Not it was mainly his push towards something big happened with the electric semis or something like that. And oh, okay. uh, I think that's what, because I, I think it was already floating around 850, and then that kind of just pushed it over the edge to 1,000. Hmm. That's pretty Does awesome. SpaceX have anything to do with Tesla stock? Not directly, but I'm sure they get because, a lot. Because, like, get, I'm sure something about the launch being successful probably did something for their stock, well, right? Yeah, everything no, ties true. back to fucking real life Tony Stark. So, and also, right. yeah. Tesla literally has the best. <laughs> ad campaign in the world when they launched a fucking car into space so yeah i mean that's yeah. fair that is fair <laughs> <laughs> so this is such a weird timeline that we live in dude yeah. oh yeah it's yeah <laughs> we're practically in like episode one of the avengers right now <laughs> like literally like just i'm just expecting the wormhole over new york city to open up and like the insectoids to come out at this point right just like thor shows up for no reason yeah, like, oh, yeah yeah okay. some <laughs> random danish guy just some fucking bulked out danish dude just appears in like maine and i'm sure to yeah. some degree captain america already exists somewhere just some fucking genetic super soldier boy toy out there in iraq or something <laughs> like, yeah, just probably. rolling around <laughs> But I don't know. I'm excited. Yeah. What if what if the new what if like the next stage of like Marvel's movies is just like 2020, just like live action footage? Well, I think they should just go like the McDonald's route and just have all the characters from McDonald's, like the Hamburglar, <laughs> Grimace and the Hamburglar, make movies about all of them, like big budget wow. movies. Uh, Dude, I would watch now, are they fighting? Movie, are they finding? Are they fighting like Burger King and Wendy? No, no, and, like, they're just no, no, no. Did you ever watch the movies? Cheese and uh, yeah, Officer... I own, I, I own them on VHS. Absolutely, just was that... the Double Stack, <laughs> Quarter Pounder. I don't know. Yeah, that, but like in big budget movies, like the Hamburglar's wow. comedy is coming to steal burgers from from McDonald's, and Ronald and the gang's got to be like, no, don't take the burgers, and that that's what we're getting in the next round of Marvel. Excellent. Right, I'd be down I for like that. It. Yeah. I'd be so down for that. Yeah. This is like like three hundred million dollar movie budget for Grimace. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Have a Wendy's slice of life anime. Yeah. <laughs> I want Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> to play Grimace. Oh my wow. god. Yeah, Leo. That be that'd be his bravest role. Yeah. Who would play Ronald? Uh Walking Phoenix, definitely. But after his role in Joker, he's get, obviously the next That's thing would fair. be Ronald McDonald. I I need Nicolas Cage as the Hamburglar. Oh fine. my god! Oh I'll take, man! Oh my god! <laughs> Where are the buns? Where are the buns? <laughs> oh my god! What was the bird? Did you see the bird I... chick? Oh, do you remember that? Oh fuck! Uh, D from fucking it. Uh, it's always sunny. There was some bird bird lady that was in the Ronald McDonald universe. Oh yeah, it yeah. just writes itself. She had like a like a like a flight cap with goggles, right? Like it, like she was pink. Like, I think so. You guys are bringing back memories of me being like five years old, and I don't necessarily think I need these memories back right now. <laughs> Everyone just frantically googling Ronald McDonald movie characters. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, you're right. The the, the, the goggles and shit. Yeah. Oh man. Oh my god. Was there one of those movies where they're like a haunted house or some shit? Officer Big Mac. That was the police guy. Officer Big Mac. <laughs> That's got to be uh, who did Paul Blart? 
Kevin James. Oh, uh, Kevin, Kevin yeah. James needs to be officer. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. Who's going to be Mayor really McCheese weird. though? Mayor McCheese. Um. Oh, uh, what's his name? Oh, god damn it. Uh, the dude that does all the Trump impersonations on SNL. Oh, Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin needs to be Mayor McCheese. Oh, that's fair. Dude, when I was a kid, one of the most striking memories I've ever had um, is they had a giant Officer Big Mac play place thing, and his head was literally a prison. They just had metal bars coming down in between the patties, and you would, like, go in there as, like, a fake jail. Like, you would, like, be locked up with the Hamburglar inside of Officer Big Mac. And it's like, why was that a thing that I was, like, why was that a kid's play place in the 1990s? I don't understand, <laughs> like... It's like, go to prison, go to, to get you, prison. They were trying to get you ingrained with 2020, David. Was that? <laughs> they were trying to get you used to the lifestyle of being behind bars. I see, I get it. I understand. We're in a police state, David. America shut down. <laughs> My God. Oh, man. I like how we started what, to, like talking about Elon Musk legalizing <laughs> weed, and we ended up with a fucking... <laughs> McDonald's of it. Oh man. Did you guys yeah, ever watch the knockoff McDonald's movie that was E.T.? Excuse me. I've, I've heard about it, that. I've heard about it. Was, it. Uh, there's a <laughs> one of the there's like a famous gif that came out of it with the kid in the wheelchair that gets thrown yeah, off the cliff. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Uh, fucking uh, <laughs> what's his name? The McGee, Ant-Man. right? Uh, yeah, Paul Rudd. Rudd. Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd. He his, was in that this movie. Is clip. Was he? Excuse I don't think me? he was in that movie. That was, was not he? Paul Rudd. I thought he was in no, the he, movie. He, he plays it on Conan every time he's on. That's Conan. right. He's the one that that trolls Conan with that clip every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah Isn't that's that from it. The show McGee and Me. <laughs> Isn't that the whole thing? No, no, no. Hold on, I'm gonna need to look this up. God damn it! I don't know. Uh, while we're looking this up, we'll come back to this topic. I just wanted. This is not like a like a long conversation. Valorant is fucking amazing, by the way. Yeah, it's Mac and Me. Mac and me. Oh, Mac, Mac and, and me. me. Okay, got it. McGee and me was a terrible Christian kids show, and it's a, just don't watch it. <laughs> I have still have uh, not autism. I still have PTSD from that. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> autism too. I don't know. They, <laughs> they got me. <laughs> Maybe they got me early. But yeah. Controversial statement. David Streamer TF Oslot. Oh, Lord. Now <laughs> throw me under the bus, right? <laughs> Misspoke. <laughs> Congressional <laughs> candidate David Ocelot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Claims to have oh, gotten man. autism from a Christian's children's show. Yeah, Chris, <laughs> yeah, controversial statement. <laughs> David Ocelot claims Christianity causes autism. You oh, know, man. actually, more maybe autism. Co- no, <laughs> let's keep it. All right, no, don't, no, <laughs> just let it, just no, no. No, <laughs> I didn't know that this movie was released to the box office, and it had a thirteen million dollar budget and only made six million back. The fact that it made six million dollars is impressive. It was a McDonald's. McDonald's produced this movie. Really? I don't know why. Wow. That's kind of insane. What year did it come out? Nineteen eighty-eight. Was it supposed to be like a subliminal messaging thing? Like they they yeah. heard Max and yeah, yeah, yeah. Ma- like McDonald's, pretty much. like the Big Mac. It, throughout uh, the whole that's... movie, it's pretty much them. Like most of the main main uh, characters work at McDonald's, and uh, the, I think McDonald's and Coke made the movie together. So they're all just drinking Coke throughout the whole fucking movie. And uh, mm-hmm. damn, dude, I feel like I need to watch this movie. You know what's really, really worse about this? Ever since we started talking about McDonald's characters, I've actually started to get hungry. Like, like I watched both Hunter and Ryan eat hamburgers, Order and I McDonald's. was like, I'm okay with this. Join the Navy. But, like, <laughs> Drink Coke. ever since we started talking about, like, like Grimace and all this stuff, I've legitimately started, like, a growing hunger has started from deep within me. McDonald's? Are, are you smoking yet? Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> they've corrupted David. Just oh, getting my civil little messaging in there. <laughs> like, Whoa. You have the flags back. You have the flags backward now. So like they. Oh god. Was that? You have the flag backwards now. Oh, is it actually backwards? It's right messaging. side for me. I can make it right side if you wanted to. 
I don't know how to get my thick... I, I've been trying to figure out why Discord mirrors the image. I want my thick boy to be the right right way. It but is the right way to me. thick boy is the right for me, yeah. That's is weird. it? Okay, yeah. I don't like that. For me, it's backwards. I don't it's like backwards. that you're doing that. Yeah, this for is how camera works. For me, it's Iob Kit. It's Iob Kit is what my <laughs> fucking says. No, boy it says thick. thick boy. Here, is the flag correct now? Because it's backwards for me. Yeah, yeah. it's okay. correct now. That's so weird. What the heck? Why would it show me... Uh, whatever. Discord does some <laughs> really weird bullshit sometimes, dude. Uh, back at it again with their bullshit, dude. But yeah, no, Valorant is fucking amazing. It it's, is. It's really, it's really scratching that itch that I had back when I played like Counter-Strike like eight hours a day. I'm getting... I'm feeling <laughs> it, and I'm feeling the addiction form. Very nice. I'm enjoying it. I'm yeah. enjoying it, and I never really liked Counter-Strike. It, it's just a better version of Counter Strike at this point. Like it just really is. It's it. They just got things right that Counter Strike has not gotten right for like eight years now. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of insane. And that's not to say that Valorant doesn't have its flaws. No. There's actually a really really great post if you go on our Valorant right now. There's a there's a list and it's like sixty things long, and it, it, where somebody posts everything that the community wants changed for Valorant, and I I agree with a lot of them, but. Yeah. Just please riot. Please, <laughs> please don't, please don't do this to my heart. Like I finally found a video game after a while that like I'm enjoying playing, and it's just please, please don't, please don't kill this. Right. Go down the road that Valve went down and just slowly destroy your own game. Yeah. Don't just you guys want to buy corrupt. more skins? More skins? It's like, uh, no, I'd like you to fix the game. Thank you. More skins. Please. <laughs> yeah, I'd like. Yeah. How about what? 126 servers, maybe? Maybe. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> no, no. Okay, no. You're only like the biggest. You're only like one of the biggest gaming companies in the world. But no, you can't handle that. Right. That's yeah, insane. Yes. Yeah. Um. How do you guys feel about the PlayStation Five design? Uh, I think it looks. I don't. I. I just haven't. It looks like an Olympic trophy, or like you know, like the like the Olympics like signage and all that stuff. It, that's what it looks like to yeah, me. Yeah. It looks very Olympic to me. I don't know. I liked it, I, I, and then and then I saw the internet memes, and it made me not like it anymore. <laughs> Dude, I, I I think the greatest. I love the internet, and I like the fact that there was literally already hentai drawn of the PlayStation Five. Yeah. Within two hours of it coming out. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's pretty insane. cool. Yeah, I've already like one of the I've top posts already. Like literally, <laughs> one of the top posts of our hentai is literally the PlayStation Five. Yeah. It's fucking magical. I love Good you, stuff. Internet. Never change. Please never change. May maybe change a you little. You can jerk off to Earth. You can jerk off to PlayStation 5. You can jerk off to the Xbox One X. Whatever browser is your preference, you can Just jerk off to Never that. stop jerking off. There's, there's. God. Operating system. God never whatever. intended for humanity to have this much imagination. Like. We we've strayed the path of God at some point in 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 civilization. Pretty cool. Um, uh, I wanted to bring up so E three's canceled, right? Like uh, uh, PAX East canceled. Everything TwitchCon's probably is canceled. You know, every, there's not. I doubt there's going to be a convention in the year two thousand twenty. Fair. Um. Do you, uh, now, I'm not talking about conventions, like PAX East and stuff like that. Like, that's a lot like, you know, creators go there, and that's a lot more like there's a lot of meet and greets, and it's a lot for different content creators to hang out and chill. Um, but E3 specifically being a showcase for, like, Xbox and PlayStation and Nintendo and, and all these other things. There were already talks about E3 going more to an online platform just because, like, why... Does there need to be a convention to watch all this shit? Do you think this is the nail in the coffin for E3 as a conference? I mean, no. it was already headed that way anyways, because um, they used to compete to be who was first at E3, right? Whoever presented first. Right. And then I think it was either Microsoft or Nintendo, one of the two, did their own conference a week before E3. Like, literally hosted their own shit, like, before E3 was like, here's a new console reveal, and, like, then we'll show you some games at E3. And so, like, ever since then, like, Sony's got their own thing, the PlayStation experience that happens in the fall, and, like, right. Microsoft's doing their own thing, Nintendo's got their direct conferences now. And so, like, they've already been, like, separating from E3 as an like, entity anyway, so it's like, I feel like... The fact that you can't like E3 was only there as a gathering point for journalists and people enthusiasts for games. 
And so I feel like them as a non-physical point just disappear entirely because no one yeah. needs them. No one's going to pay them to host their stupid presentations. No one's going to do any of that. And so it's like they're just going to do their own thing and, and forget about E3 entirely. So I don't know. I mean, I think like, it was already heading that way anyways. Um, yeah. But, yeah. Well, a lot of the content creators I'd seen, like, years ago, you know, 2009, 2010, were like, Yo, dude, fuck it. Dude, we got invited to E3. Like, it's a party. Let's go. And then, like, two years later, they're like, <sighs> Well, I guess I have to go to E3 this year so I can, like, fucking film a reaction video <laughs> and get those E3 views. So, it already, like, from a content creator standpoint, it already seemed like people were, like, fucking done with it. Right. Yeah. I think also it's like it used to be back when they did print media for video game journalism like that was another big thing too was like if you were there at the event you could get out photos early and stuff like that like yeah but like know. yeah nowadays it's all streamed so we all get it at the same time anyways so it doesn't really matter so, i don't know it's it's interesting to see it all my die. roommate gets like game informer and i look at that magazine and i was like i legitimately haven't seen one of these in like 10 years like, <laughs> like how do you ex how do how do you exist yeah. I, don't, I don't understand. Um, who is still buying Game Informer? Well, game Informer exists because of um, if you're a GameStop Pro member or whatever, the rewards member, you get oh it for free. God. So you get the it's a part of their benefits for. So you're if when GameStop dies, you think Game Informer dies? With oh, it? absolutely! It's it's funded entirely by them. Which is why it's like, thanks for bending over. Here's a magazine up your ass. Yeah. It's like, dying industry holds on to crutches of other dying industries. Exactly. <laughs> Which I think it's a shame that honestly, like, I, GameStops are such a disappointment for me. Mm -hmm. GameStops could have innovated to be something so much more than they were. Oh yeah, like th they could have made land. They could have bought bigger buildings. They could have done land tournaments in areas of the country where there's, you know, I'm in bumfuck Georgia. There, if, if I want a land tournament, I got to drive fucking an hour all just to get into Atlanta before I reach any like civilization like that. Right. So like if a if a GameStop did that, you're talking about local kids coming in spending money to play games with like their friends, or if they can't afford you know an eight hundred dollar computer or what have you, they can play. You know, I don't I don't know. I think they could have innovated and done so much more, and the fact that they didn't. They're just going down the path of what Sears did. You don't innovate, you fucking die. Right. Well, I think they, they tried to innovate by being more of a hot topic or like a Newberry Comics, where they like were just trying to sell. They're broadening their things that they're selling. So yeah, because Hot like, Topic is doing so good in 2020. <laughs> yeah, most most mall stores nowadays are just dying because of Amazon. So it's like. There's, they, they don't have a chance in hell, to be honest with you. Like, well, malls were dying even before Amazon was like really prevalent. Because, like, I don't know. I th I can count on one hand the amount of times I've been in a in a mall in my life. That's fair. Now maybe I'm just a weird loser kid. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> yeah. I'm... I think malls were I mean, pretty popular malls until life, Amazon. But like, that was like I, pinnacle America. Was that the mall was, was that, like Hunter? it was like the pinnacle American hangout and it's true. Mall I feel, I, in the eighties and nineties, <laughs> but then by the time we were going to school, you had you had like Avalons and you had like other places. That it was more like an outdoor mall where you could walk around and it was more like an outdoor walk around kind of thing as opposed to like one giant building. So you're talking about like a shopping plaza versus a, a mall? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Gotcha. I think up here, like up north, because the space is so limited, malls are still pretty big. Um, but now they're just dying in general because like the only people that hang out at malls are kids that can't afford to buy anything and they just I steal wonder if Corona kills day. malls. Corona? Um, who knows? Yeah. Probably. I think Corona could kill a lot of the malls across America. Mm -hmm. They were already dying, but this is just nail in the coffin. Right, yeah, it's yeah. the final blow. <laughs> but um yeah, dude, I, I, I gotta say, like, I I'm I've always I've never really been because I had a PlayStation 2, I didn't have an Xbox original, um, and then I got an Xbox 360 because of Halo, because I went over to Ryan's house and he was playing Halo 3, and I was like, yo, this is fucking great. And he's like, Well, you have to get one, and I was like, Yeah, I've got to get one. And like, it, it Xbox, like Xbox 360 nope. days were some oh. of the best. Oh, we lost well, it. I just was talking about with the batteries. <laughs> you hate to see it. And I like some of my favorite days of all time of gaming were Xbox 360 days, where you jump on the Halo 3, 
And you'd have a hundred people on your friends list, and eighty-five of them were all on playing Halo Three custom games. And then there was the competing with your friends on who was going to get in the in the in the marquee Xbox Live party. And then if somebody else got on that was more popular than you, they're like, "Well, sorry, Tommy, fuck you." And you're like, "Yeah, this, yeah." I mean, it it was literally like like survival of the of the popularity of the Xbox parties. It was great. Um, but I gotta say, this PlayStation Five exclusives, I lo- I'm legitimately considering buying a PlayStation Five versus Xbox, who's like, I've already lost all hope in the Halo franchise. I lost it after four. I lost it with four. Um, and I mean, I've never played Gears of War, so that's not like a huge selling point to me. Isn't Gears of War on the PC now, anyways? Yeah, yeah I, I actually own it on. Windows Store. So is there, outside of Halo, which Halo's on fucking PC now anyways, is there a, is there a console exclusive that's just Xbox right now? Um, I don't think actually Microsoft cares as long as you buy through the store. I, I just don't think that they care. Like, yeah, they got some. Forza's, yeah. I think they're big one. Well, you can buy Forza 7 on PC too. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I own that too. So, so. I, <laughs> it's I, 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 I love the idea of Microsoft bringing their games to the PC but uh, it also makes me question about the future of like the Xbox and like if there's no exclusives, what? Why would you buy? I, again, this is as a PC gamer. There's people that don't have a PC and you know they like Microsoft games. I just I feel like PlayStation just got the better exclusives. I mean, for sure for console, but I, like I said, I think, I honestly think Microsoft would rather have it that they don't have to produce hardware every year. And that they, because yeah. a lot of times you sell for a loss in the hardware business, and like the software end of it's where you make your money back. So if they can just get people to have their own PCs, and there's cross play between Xbox owners and PC owners now. And so, yeah. like, as long as your friends groups aren't getting split, they don't really care at all. Like, they're just going to sell their games on their store, and you have to pay them the money. And so it's like, for yeah. them, it doesn't matter. Like, they're winning, they have a, like, they doubled their user base because everyone on PC now plays Xbox exclusives. And they can use that against Sony, where Sony just has PS5, which is like a six, seven hundred dollar console right now. Um, right. So it's like for them, it makes more sense to say, "Hey, this is our pre-built option. You can play all our games. It's absolutely guaranteed to work on this, and you don't have to do any dicking around with it." Or if you want to be an enthusiast, you can go on the other side and play Steam games in, um, in addition to the, our games. So that's true. I feel like it'll be more Windows Store exclusives now, or like Microsoft Store exclusives, um, yeah, instead of Xbox exclusives. Because there'll be a game that's not coming to Steam, and you have to buy it through Microsoft. So I'd count those. Like, do you I'd think say, there's a future where they just stop making Xbox consoles? Well, no. probably not. Probably not. Because like, there's so many people. Like, that do you think need Microsoft? Could, do you think Microsoft comes out with a PC slash console? Um, I I'd be interesting to see if they come out with an Xbox OS. Like you can dual boot basically into an Xbox OS on your PC. That would be interesting. Ooh, yeah, and that's then, probably like, the next step. Ex- yeah, Xbox certified hardware or something like that. Right. Where they don't even have to manufacture it, but if you buy a card, it's going to be certified for that operating system. Right, right. Like my ex, like where my PC is, there's an Xbox. But if I want to go downstairs and like play with like my family or friends or whatever, I could take it downstairs and just hook it up to the TV and have the same experience. Right. I think that's the future of gaming, honestly. But yeah, it's interesting. I think Microsoft actually has their best foot, like the best footing in this one, because consoles are becoming more so? and more like PC. Like a PS5. Oh, yeah, is oh, yeah, 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 because yeah. of Microsoft, yeah. Yeah. So it's basically, they, they have the best way, the best of both worlds, really. But Yeah. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see that, because Nintendo's got, like, I don't know, Nintendo's got the portable market pretty shut the fuck down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, they, like, they, well, it's funny, too, because Nintendo's offering is literally an NVIDIA Shield that they just custom wrote an OS yeah. for. So it's like, right. they're already, they're heading there, too. Like, everybody's heading towards the, the PC architecture, like, but Nintendo has the right idea that, like, hey, if you're gonna have a console, you might as well have it portable. You know, like, hey, you're gonna, the only thing Nintendo needs to do is get like an actual functioning multiplayer for some of their fucking games. <laughs> their online is so bad; it's it's. Terrible. How is it so bad? Still haven't figured that shit out. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, it's 2020, <laughs> dude. Like, fuck me. Come on, Nintendo. <laughs> 
Yeah. I think there's nothing more frustrating than trying to play Animal Crossing and you have to wait like five minutes every time one person enters. Like everyone in your island has to wait five minutes for one person to enter your town. <laughs> and you're just like, why? I just want to play. Like, just pop in, pop out. Like, come on. <laughs> nope. Oh, man. <laughs> it's, it's, it's impressive. I don't know. It, it just, uh, it, to me, I feel like it's going to be Sony versus Nintendo on the console market, and then it's going to be an Xbox PC hybrid. Yeah. Which I'd be it, excited yeah. for. That'd be great. No, it'd be, it's good. I feel like, I, like this is the best, like this is the best spot for consumers right now is that you have yeah. all these options and then the cross play across all, like even across PlayStation and Xbox, Nintendo and Xbox, like the fact that you don't have to choose a platform and only play with that group of friends anymore is kind of like pretty huge. Yeah. Because it used to be a terrible, terrible thing. Like, owning Destiny 1. Yeah, there was like, an entire friend group we had where they, they only played PlayStation, and there was the other friend group that played Xbox in high school, and it's like, oh, there's fucking PlayStation 3 kids over there. Right. The worst. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Um. Oh, my God, dude. That I, I literally got goosebumps, and I, I... Dude, I marked out when I watched that Demon Souls remake <laughs> trailer. Because I just went through it I, on stream the other day. I watched all the PS5 ones. And Ryan, Ryan and I watched... Uh, Ryan and I recently beat Resident Evil 4 for the first time. Sure did. Which was fucking great. That was a fun game. Really enjoyed it. We're starting Resident Evil 5 this week. Um, The end of that game was hilarious, though. Where we just, like, we played Deja Vu uh, from... Uh, oh, god damn. What's that anime, Ryan? Uh, D... Uh, initial D... Initial D, the initial D intro song, where it's deja vu, I've been in this place before, as we're fucking, oh my god, it was hilarious. I fucking loved it. Yes. Um, but, uh, I don't know, RE8 Village looks kind of weird. I legitimately thought that it was like an, I, I, when I first watched that, I legitimately thought it was an Outlast 3 trailer. I can see that. But, I don't know. I, do you, How many Resident Evil games do you think they're going to make? 11, 12, 20. Uh, how, what, what, at what point do you think they stop the franchise? And then... When we all die, video games stop making things? <laughs> Why stop? You, you, don't, you don't think they'll ever right. stop making Resident Evil games? What, what, are they ever going to stop making Final Fantasy games? Are they ever going to stop making Yeah, World but Warcraft Final Fantasy is known for having like 40 games. <laughs> just keep going. Why stop? What, what just happened? <sighs> I said, just if you got a games, then just keep going. Keep there. make Halo Six, make Halo Seven. Just keep going. Why stop? I'm so, I'm so <laughs> right. not interested in Halo anymore, dude. I'm excited for Infinite. Uh, Open world Halo game. Nothing about four or five gives me any hope for the future of that franchise. Five had a great multiplayer. It was a lot That's of fair. Fun. Did it? Five had some decent stuff going for it. Ground War and all that. Yeah. They had the giant like mech know. things you could like battle people I, with. That I, was cool. I mean, I wasn't a fan of the storyline, but I still played the shit out of Halo Five because the multiplayer was really good. Mm. <laughs> Are you guys a fan See, at I, all I, of I, the I, old Resident Evil games at all? Like the old style of well, it? We, uh, you mean like PS1? you mean like terrible cam, terrible controls and terrible camera <laughs> angle? <laughs> Basically, it was something like that. <laughs> um, it's 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 a it's a I, I'd say it's a fun novelty. Like it's fun to sit back and play it, but like. Even playing RE1 Remake, I was like, wow, I really wish this had, like, functioning controls, so I didn't feel like I was, like, trying to drive a car with a fucking joystick. Yeah, I mean, we, we did right. all of RE1 with the classic controls, and we did play yeah. a little bit of RE0 where that was the same thing. Fuck RE0, controls. that was terrible. Yeah, but there's a new game coming out on Steam called Signalis. I've been watching it on Twitter for a while. It's been in development for, like, a couple of years. But it's basically supposed to be on the style of the old Resident Evils, but it's entirely with um, 2D slash 3D art kind of thing. It's oh. like pixel art, but it's all it's 3D pixel art. I don't know how they did it, but they did it. Um, but it looks cool. I was just wondering if, if you guys had heard of it at all. No, I have not, but I will definitely check that out. It's, it definitely seemed like right up your alley as far as those kind of things are concerned. So I figured I'd tell you about it. Yeah, fair enough. But yeah, I don't know. I guess there's no other discussion. Uh, 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 last last point I want to make here: What the fuck is with chess blowing up on Twitch recently? Actually, I've actually um, I've been following Twitch, like the chess people for a while now. It used to be just one guy called Chess Network, and he was just like a, a national master that played. Um, yeah. And then the Chess.com made their own channel, and then everyone that was on Chess.com like split off and made their own channels. 
and I don't know. I, I don't get why it's like big now, but like they've been chugging at it for like literally three years now. So there it's was that cool uh, like it's been... make it <laughs> the big. Um, there was a chess master that he was. Uh, he's the guy that's been teaching XQC how to play chess. He apparently kind of made it really big on Twitch because I watched uh, Penguins. Oh, was he moist, moist critical. He made a video moist about critical, why yeah. it's being so popular on Twitch, and it, it's all because of this chess master. That's apparently there's like always been this real tone of arrogance or tone of um, superiority in the chess community that, that he's kind of not allowing to happen on Twitch, and it's it's getting to a point where everybody wants to play chess because there's not this sense that if you don't know how to play chess or if you haven't been playing chess for fucking 20 years you're right. you're pretty much just a piece of garbage that doesn't deserve anybody's time and he's kind of saying no we're all here to play chess and that right. dude's, I, don't, I don't i don't know his Hikaru name nakamura yeah that's it yeah, Hikaru, Hikaru nakamura. nakamura yeah and he's like blowing up on twitch like he he yeah. routinely has twitch streams with thousands of people watching he was the top yeah, I was on last streamer night on Twitch. Twitch. And, like, he made chess yeah. the top category above League of Legends the other day. Yeah. It was kind of insane. So. Yeah, I was most critical on Twitch last night. Had over 5,000 people watching him play chess, dude. It's like, what the fuck, bro? Hmm. Yeah, no, there's a video. And I recommend everyone go watch it. And there was a chess.com like, tournament they did where Moist Critical played against XQC. And on the second round, Moist Critical checkmates him in six turns. And like ever, nobody expected it, and they cut to Moist Critical's audio. <laughs> it, you know, Moist Critical. He's just, he's not like a crude guy, but his ver his vernacular is just really like fucking out there. And he's literally like, "My cock is throbbing!" Oh, and it's just like the official twitchchess dot com. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. That's actually <laughs> terrible. <laughs> So that the the I love the idea of like this dude teaching XQC chess and like XQC training for this and voice critical just like fucking oh my just destroying him is hilarious. He probably got him with the scholars mate too, like something that he should have known about, but they probably overlooked because they were just like, oh, it's too simple, and then like literally just like oh, basically. He literally uses his king to checkmate the queen by do, like like uh, it's just like so dumb how he does it. i wait, you, you, but, what? <laughs> That's not what happened. It's I was that's saying, what I was happened. Like, you can't check use your king to the, the checkmate king. a queen because the the king can't. No, opposite. Queen okay. checkmated the king. Excuse yeah, me. yeah. So it was probably the scholar's mate Excuse that you put me. the bishop out and then you just like, yeah. bring the that's queen exactly in what he did. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. It's literally it's been a minute the, since I played chess. It's the have you played chess before check. Like, oh yeah, let's play chess, and then you do the scholar's mate, and if they don't know what's happening, they won't stop you, and then you just like. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally that's the like the ultimate check of just like have you played okay nope all right <laughs> i win bye -bye. so yeah um but yeah i think i think that'll do it guys um i need to find out what nicholas cage movie we're watching next week ryan is going to be doing that new take clown posse thing we're all ryan and i are also going to be starting uh co-op resident evil streams uh did we say monday or wednesday I, it has to be monday tomorrow yeah, works for you yeah that's fine i can do it tomorrow <laughs> So we'll, we'll both be streaming on our own channels, doing co-op Resident Evil. Um, so that'll be fun. Check that out. You know, Captain Milney on Twitch, and that's Crash Carl with two H's on Twitch. Um, outside of that, I'm just going to be playing the fuck out of Valorant. And I want to start doing some more GTA RP. I want to, like, actually start, like, evolving some characters and doing some, like, shit like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm also reading up on a module, and I want to be launching a Dungeons and Dragons campaign on my Twitch channel and on a few other people's Twitch channels, where they'll be players and I'll be DMing. So stay tuned for that in the upcoming weeks. Uh, David, yep. what are you doing? What, what am you I doing going on this week? This coming week, um, I'm hoping yeah. to get my power supply in so I can stream, because otherwise I'll have to switch batteries every like five seconds and it'll be sucky. <laughs> um, so that'll be good. And then uh, I should be streaming this week. And then basically I'll probably be um, playing mostly Valorant. And then if I have time and then basically scubaing and all that stuff. So that'll be fun. David and, then, and I are also in talks, and we are wanting to start a five to ten man uh, team. Okay. 
I'd like to do 10 man where we could get two good IG in game leaders and we could scrimmage off of each other and improve and test strats on each other. I think that would honestly be a, like a lot of fun. Fair enough. So we're, we're, we're looking for a few people that are good at the game and that are willing to learn and, and practice and devote some time for that. Yeah. Now is definitely the time to get in at low level Absolutely. before everything gets solidified for pro teams. Yeah. But yeah, well, and while people have like are working from home and have free time too, <laughs> right? And then uh, we're going to be doing that D and D Twitch thing. Yes, no, maybe. Yeah, okay. yeah. Um, that'll be. I just got to get everything prepared for that. Okay. Um, but all the players, if if the if it'll be probably like five or six people that are doing it. Um, but it'll just be a good time. It, it was. It's the it's Storm King's Thunder. It's the module module we did before. But I'm I'm pretty excited about it. Very cool. Very so, good. Hell yeah. Is that, is that, Might even do a 24 hour stream. Character? <laughs> you, Ryan, you are welcome to have your drug dealing gnome character back. I'd love to have him back. That's the favorite character I ever played. You might not be able to get away with some of the sexual assaults you did to your familiar, but wow. you know what? Like, <laughs> maybe we'll allow it. There wasn't any sexual assaults, it was all legal roles. It was all consensual? Uh, that, that's yeah, what yeah. the roles said, baby. <laughs> all right all right fair enough don't blame me blame the I dice just hope, i just hope i don't have to role play an ogre having sex with your imp again but you know what if if it gets to that it gets to that that's it pretty was magical cool. it was a lot <laughs> <laughs> um outside of that anything anything david anything um, else not well, i mean um, yeah that's about it for now <laughs> You're Don't good. want to make any right. promises, you know. Uh, check also check check him out at twitch.tv slash tf ocelot tf ocelot. So good guy, good people. Proud to be. Uh, Hunter, what about yourself? Well, I uh, I'm still doing the podcast with Botang. That's uh, Botang and Hunter's No Name Podcast. And uh, haven't been streaming pretty much at all because I don't think I'm a very good streamer. So I uh, just kind of stopped that. So. Start streaming Valorant, dude. Rip. Eh, I'm pretty bad at Valorant too. So. Rip. Do you know I've made a literal job out of being bad at video games? <laughs> this is true, about. actually. <laughs> <laughs> gotta try hard enough. Gotta believe me. I have made more. it to where this is my job. I don't know. I this is I probably have one of the more scuffed streams on Twitch, and I've made it into a career, Hunter. So <laughs> eh, maybe. I don't know. I think I need to change my name again. So probably gonna wait a little bit. <laughs> Okay, all right, all right. But yeah, check out the podcast. But you can catch... <laughs> oh. Go ahead, sorry. That's it. Check out my podcast, Botang and okay. Hunter's No Name Podcast. You can also catch Hunter. He likes to hop in and out of uh, Ryan and I streams. So you, um, most afternoons, evening streams, you can catch him uh, chilling in our in our streams as well. Are you, are you timid, Hunter? Are you hiding behind your microphone? <laughs> oh, man, he's shy. Ryan, how about yourself, buddy? Why didn't why did they call him the hamburglar, not the cheeseburglar? Like, who wants hamburgers? You want cheeseburgers? And maybe he's lactose intolerant. But I feel like if you steal enough hamburgers, you're eventually stealing cheeseburgers by proxy. But I mean, but <laughs> I mean, who? Like, how many people go to McDonald's and get a hamburger? Probably people that are lactose intolerant. <laughs> He's, so a, he's so twice is, evil. He's this is for evil. this is the mascot for the lactose intolerance. This people. is the ma- this is the lactose intolerance mascot. All right, oh, I didn't Lord. think about that. The lactose <laughs> intolerant yeah. thieves. Yeah. 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 The also for the burglars and the lactose intolerant people. Yeah. In case that milk that dairy is too spicy. There's a lot of cross a lot of crossover there. Um, yeah. Nah, just streaming. I started school this week. And huh. nerd. So that sucks. What a nerd. I might not even be able to stream tonight because I still have homework to do before midnight. Huh. So <laughs> we'll uh Yeah, but at least you should be able to be done with school this year, right? Yes. I just I I, I hope I you're put looking off forward hardest... to your Minecraft graduation. What? I hope you're looking forward to your Minecraft graduation. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, I, my, I'm probably going to do mine in Roblox, so I'll try and get the, everyone in, in oh, GSU. Oh, wow. Yeah. Be like, you guys, yeah, how about instead impressive. of Minecraft, let's do Roblox. That'll be more fun. I'm surprised you're doing that, not Gary's Mod, with how, how much you love Gary's Mod. Yeah, maybe we can do it in Hogwarts. There you go. Oh, my God. That would be <laughs> magical. Have a graduation in Hogwarts. 
and the Snatchers will all be running around grabbing all the girls. That'd yeah, but cool. you guys are too old for them. So, like, unless they were, they, if they were doing like a middle school graduation, they'd probably allow it. But you guys are a little too out of their age range. Yeah. Fuck you, Harry Potter RP, and all your damn pedophiles that play in it. <laughs> There's so much pedophilia. It's oh, so uncomfortable. No. Yeah. That's terrifying. <laughs> yeah. It's Who would have cool. thought that, that wizard wizardry, mag- the magic of Harry Potter, would lead to all these pedophiles playing video games? Well, that's a conversation oh. for another episode. <laughs> that's, right. Yeah, that, you know, well, yeah, yeah. So you check out again. You can check out Ryan at twitch.tv slash Crash Carl. Playing inches. Harry Potter RP oh. every night. Playing Harry Potter RP. He's 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 busting these pedophiles. Yeah, he's under the directive of 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 our Lord President Donald Trump to bust this pedophile ring. So yeah. it's there's a lot going on. Yeah. Hunter at twitch.tv slash Sip It On Syrup. Uh, and then David at twitch.tv slash TF Ocelot and twitch.tv slash Captain Melney. Uh, we'll see you guys on the next episode. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. See you later. Bye. See you. Bye. Hola. Really big shout out to the Patreon supporters KLSK1, Garrison Coley, TrueX23, Ziggy Storm, Senpai Gray, Lieutenant Dan, and Wheels OG. Thank you guys so much. Mm-hmm.